What's up, nerds? Welcome back to another episode of Canode Knows, brought to you by Dig BMX. This week on the show, we got Matt Clausen. He's dope. He rides for Fiend and Premium, and uh, I've known him forever, which is super dope. And we've crossed paths, and this conversation is awesome. He's It made me realize how amazing of a human being he is. So he's deserving of everything that he's getting lately, and uh, except for the knee injury, which we get into. He doesn't deserve that, but he's handling it like a champion. So yeah, go to RareLife.com, buy Superfoods, and use promo code Canode. Subscribe, like, share the show with a friend, all that shit. Let's get into it. Here's Matt Clausen. Hey, dude, let's just talk. Got it. Okay, cool. Let's let's chop it up, Matt. All right, cool. Hi, hi, Matt. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Bobby? <laughs> hey, long time no see, my dude. We put the show on for the intro. Uh, it has been a minute. When's the last time I saw you? Street Fighter. Oh damn, yeah. And that's Shit. been a minute. I've just been seeing you on the internet, so it feels like I've seen you. It feels like I see all my BMX homies all the time. You know. I know. We talk. Yeah. We talk. We message. I yeah. see you're killing it. You got a lot of uh, cool things going on now. In life, life is good. Yeah, life is good. And, you know, I'm out there. I'm getting clips with the helmet on. I'm finishing I seen you back on the bike, part. too. Yeah. <laughs> seen some nose manuals, seen it. Dude, those are a bitch. Those are, you can get lost lost in the sauce on nose manuals. Like, uh, two nights ago, I went out to film with Zach Beerley, and I was like, yeah, I can nose that pretty easily because I'm still in my 16-year-old head. And, <laughs> and then, you know, an hour later, I'm like, okay, I don't think I can do it right now. But it was worth a shot because you never know. You could get lucky. That's something I probably never said is I can nose that pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a couple of like heavy ass nose manuals in the videos that I just watched. Like, yeah, I try to find good placements for them because I know I don't have the longest one. So it's like, all right, if this sense. is the spot for it, then I'll just try to drop one right here and see how it goes. So in I think it was 2016 or one of the ones you did some you and a bunch of homies were along the freeway and you went up a bank, did a wall ride and then nose manual to drop. And then oh, yeah. everybody's going wild and the cop comes up and the first thing out of his mouth is everybody against the wall. I want to know, yeah. the, rest, I want to know the rest of that clip. What, anything happen? Um, well, it's that one. So when I landed in the clip, I kind of like, it's such a big drop that I land and I kind of swerve and hit the wall again. Yeah. And I really didn't want to take that one. So I'm riding away bummed and like everybody's screaming and it's kind of like, I want to turn around and go again. And then I see the cop just pull up and I just like kind of rode off half disappointed half like in my head already knowing okay this kind of makes the clip a little bit yeah that the cop pulled up and then i didn't think he was going to come so crazy and he had everyone against the wall cameras down you can kind of hear me in the background he says you over here and i'm kind of like bummed in my voice like all right i'm coming like <laughs> i got it you know and then so we sat down and i actually the go before i went over the front jumped off Damn. And I landed so hard that I kind of gave myself like a concussion in a way. I've never done it before. I didn't really hit my head, but the way I landed, it was like I Full land body concussion. So, yeah. So we're sitting there with the cops and I'm like in a almost having an out of body experience sitting there like, oh fuck, like, oh man. And then cop leaves us. We ride back to my car and I'm like about to throw up at my car, like, dude, I think I like somehow I have a concussion or something. Like I don't feel right. And like Ryan Mills is there and all the homies, and they're like, are you sure you're good to drive? And I was like, hold on, just give me a second. Let me chill for a while. <laughs> I was good after a few, but it was just like a weird, the bail. I don't know how it shook my body weird or something, but yeah, I was like half concussed in a way. So That's wild. it was kind of weird. Yeah. I can't say I've ever had a foot concussion. <laughs> like you landed on your feet and got a concussion. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. It was like a, maybe a whiplash, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, it was the first time it's ever happened to me. Only time. And even Ryan was like, he brings it up every once in a while. Remember when you bailed so hard, you gave yourself a concussion? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as hell. Yeah. Speaking of injuries, you're on the injured list right now, huh? Yeah, this is the, definitely the worst one I've had to deal with. So, What is I mean, it? Um, tell, us, tell me about it. Uh, so December, I was in San Diego. I pretty much go there, try to at least like once a month or so to go meet up with Garrett and Ennis. And um, it's just kind of like a continuous thing. Garrett's always filming. They're always doing stuff. And if I can get the days off of work, I'll do like a long weekend, yes. head to San Diego and just go meet up and film and stuff. So um, we've been working on some stuff and there's a spot in San Diego I've always known about. And I just like want to do this trick. Went to it the night before, like looked at it. The run up kind of sucked, but I was still like, all right, let's go tomorrow. I'll see if I, you know, and it was like one of those things that we got there the next day and I wasn't really feeling it. And like, usually at this point in my life, I'm 33 this point i'm like i better be 100 if i'm going to be sending some stuff yeah and i usually have pretty calculated with the risk i'm taking and this one i feel like i kind of just like 
shoved a square peg in a round hole, you know, yep. like fucking forced it. The run up was a turn. I didn't have the right speed, but I did a couple run ups, did a couple warm ups. Was like, all right, I can manage this. I know what I got to do. And then bailed one time, ran back up and ate shit. Um, kind of looped out at the bottom of a rail and my left leg landed in grass and slipped out. So my right leg got stuck under me Oof. and I tore my patellar tendon, ACL, meniscus, and IT band, like all in my right knee at one time. You broke your knee. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And knees are, you know, it's one of those things that's like, we've all heard it and in BMX, we all talk about it. Like you, I almost like avoided the word ACL like my whole life just because right. I was so scared of it. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, it's, uh, it's definitely been the roughest one. Like I've broken bones, you know, I've had months off the bike, but in all the years of my riding, this is, it's been almost six months. This happened in December. So, Damn, um, yeah. I got my first surgery, uh, end of December on my patellar tendon. They had to sew that back together. Um, which pretty much connected the bottom half of my leg to the top half. <laughs> Dude, that's and then, so crazy. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. And I, I can laugh at it now because it's been, you know, a while, but fuck, man, it was rough for a while there. I believe like, pretty it. much paralyzed from, you know, the knee down. Yeah. Had no feeling like I couldn't even move my leg from the knee down. It's just like dead weight. That's yeah, dead weight. Crazy. Exactly. Nothing connecting it. And then, um, did you so get up and try insane. and walk on it right when it happened or were you just, no, back, so, like, no, it's um, I was laying in the grass and, you know, Garrett is the man, like he's, been around through so much and like he knows how to stay calm and collected and he's like got his phone ready he's like if you want me to call 911 we'll get you an ambulance right now you just give me the okay and i'll hit dial you know yeah. and then i'm laying there and like i think it was hobie was there and tammy and like we had this solid crew yeah. and like they're like bro i'll back my truck up into the grass we'll get you in there hobie shows up with a box he's like if you want we can tape this around your leg as a splint for now and just kind of get you to the you know to the hospital so i was like all right let's send it so fucking tape my leg up in a box, put me in the SUV and just go to the hospital. <laughs> and we get to the emergency room and there's a, like a crackhead freaking out in there, spitting on the cops, like creating a whole scene. And my leg is like the size of like a melon. Like my knee is huge. And I'm just Shit. like in the most agony ever. And this guy's just screaming in the <laughs> emergency room, <laughs> spitting on cops. Like, so yeah, that was fun. A but moment like you'll I never said, forget. You said Tammy was there and you took a truck. That's a ambulance. You took, that, you took the oh ambulance there. <laughs> yes. I've never taken the ambulance, but I took the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so shit. yeah, I mean, and continue with Garrett and Tony and his being the man. Like I was staying at Garrett's house, obviously. So did the hospital thing. You know, they were able to do a CAT scan, x-rays, pretty much tell me I was screwed. I had to get home to get surgery. Um Next day, Garrett was like, whenever you're ready, just let me know and we'll drive your car home and we'll like go back to Vegas with you. So I like woke up and I didn't think I was going to be ready for a while and watched a movie and was kicking it. And then I just had a spur of like, I want to be home. Yeah. And I just like, yo, are you guys cool? Let's like, we go now. And he's like, fuck it, let's go. So Garrett yeah, yeah. just fucking Tony and his drove my car. I rode in the passenger seat, just kicked back. Um, Joe Riley shit. rode with us. Sick. Like it was just, you know, and so luckily I had cool homies to help, but, um, yeah, so first surgery was December, and then a three months of physical therapy, building my muscle back up, getting my leg back moving, and then they went in and did the ACL and meniscus in March. So about three months now since ACL surgery. So any more surgeries to come, or are you just rehab now? No, just physical <clears throat> therapy. I go like two or three days a week. Um, my goal is like by August, hopefully, to be riding again. So nice. they tell you like six to nine months with ACL, and like. The physical therapist and the surgeon are like, if you keep working the way you are and keep doing what you're doing, you could probably be good by six months. So Hell yeah. Are you doing shit outside of PT at home on your own? Yeah, definitely. I, I pretty much every day. Like I'm, I don't know. Like I said, this is the longest I've been off my bike and it really made me like realize how much I love it. And it's like, fuck man. I just, just even like I watch videos and I just see someone dropping in and the way they drop into a quarter pipe, I'm like, oh man, I know that feeling right there. And it's like. <laughs> They just like pump over a little hip or something. And I'm like, I just want my hands to be doing that. Like over, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. And I can't wait to get back. Like, I know it's a lot of mental stuff and everything, but with what I was trying, and like I said, I kind of forced something that wasn't really right for the spot. So 
yeah. kind of know in my head when I get back to it, just don't do that again. And then I should be all right. Yeah. So that's yeah. a tough one, dude. And being, yeah. being there with like Garrett and Tony, even though they're home, they're low key and they're chill, they're not trying to like force you to do anything. And you drove out there. So like the moment was like a little. Yeah. <clears throat> Luckily I've been, and it's crazy. Like I listened to, you know, Johnny on here and I've, you know, obviously being in the position I'm in, like feel super grateful to be where I'm at. And like, now that I've been homies with them for so long, like Gary and Tony are some of my best friends. It's like, I used to have that a little bit more. And now it's more like, Oh, just do you like, we yeah. have you on here because we like who you are. And it's like, just do you That's so don't sick, feel dude. forced to do anything. And yeah, me and Tony have been filming a lot lately and it's been amazing to get to do that. So sick. Yeah. How long? At my age and where I'm at in life, getting to be what I'm do what I'm doing is like, I'm super grateful. Yeah. Fucking a. I'm, proud of you like it's crazy how long you've been shredding at this level you know like i i'm going back to like 2012 trying to find like a mediocre clip of matt Claus and, and it's nowhere to be found you know every clip in your edits is <laughs> like just banger 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 what? it's wild so what year was that when you graduated asu 20, 2012 that was 2012 okay yeah do you remember so, the party at your house and everything yeah, i sure do <laughs> vaguely <Yeah. laughs> i was just telling a friend about it today they were like did you get the college experience i was like kind of you know i made the college experience at my house it's fucking yeah. sick yeah yeah, yeah. I, that and that's so like fun. the credits to mediocre right yeah, yeah like a little yeah so wild and yeah so yeah you've been at this level for that long i feel like you had all the tricks you have now back then but now you're just like kind of matured and using different spots and s selecting the shit how did you get so good at bikes first of all wait before i ask you that i want to know yeah. let's talk about tony and garrett how'd you meet them and how long you said you've been homies with them for a while now like how did um, this all sh how did this whole thing come up so i was riding for deco which was chad you know chad DeGroote's yeah. company yeah and uh it was going it was cool um i think i want to say like 2016 something like that there was a uh what was those called? The Monster uh, Street Series. Yeah, I think it was in LA. We were just cruising around the streets or whatever. I had met Garrett through being really good friends with Tammy, Lashawn, yep. like our whole crew. Kicked it with them when they first moved to San Diego. Like, I think in 2011, I want to say they all moved to San Diego somewhere around then. Yeah, and it was like the Deadline House. There was like the Sabrosa crew. San Diego was like insane at that time. The Market Crew. It was like this insane yeah, place real. of all. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty crazy. And so. <laughs> I was really good friends with Tammy and LaShawn and then Tony Maloof, Jeff Westcott, David Grant. Like we kind of created this whole crew. Yeah. Holy shit. And, <laughs> yeah. So it was like this whole thing that we had, we were like our squad, they had their squad. We all just became homies. And then they kept doing their thing, obviously put out deadline, you know, fiend blew up, you know, Garrett continued to be who he is. And, uh, I was riding for Deco, just talking to Garrett, chatting it up. Like he was just kind of asking how things were going casual talk like not even anything you know what i mean and then uh that was like a july i think probably 2016 and then october was interbike and it was like the last one in vegas and i'm just cruising with the vegas homies walking around and um garrett ty bob who's like part owner of fiend yep. the whole squad <clears throat> just like comes up to me like bro what size frame you want like what you're on hey. and i was just, and i was like whoa you know like yeah. really kind of like confused <laughs> and no for sure like if you want to be on like yeah, just let us know. And then Bob gave me his contact info and then I'll just kind of went from there. You know, it was just like a homie it. hookup and I never thought it would become more than anything. I never expected anything. And then like, just kept doing me, started meeting up with them more and more. And then it was like, I want to say 2020 when all that kind of happened, that was when like, I really got kind of brought more into it and pushed up more into like where I'm at now with them. So where it's pretty are you, crazy to think. Where are you at now with them? When you say that, what do you mean? Um, I mean, I don't really look like I don't have a signature stuff. Like I want to be considered on the pro team, but Garrett, you know, he hooks me up every month, he pays me, takes care of me, you know, yeah, like, they, pro. yeah. <laughs> so, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and he's an official dude, like he knows what he's doing and the way he brought Johnny and Lewis up, like there's not many companies who have done proper stuff like that, you know, right. make them put in the work as AMs, take care of them. You know, a lot of people thought he might not have been, but he was making sure they were good, you know, and yeah. continued repping. And I'm sure they had other offers from other companies to go pro right away. And they just stuck with it. And then now they're the dudes, like they have their signature frames and Lewis is winning X games and Johnny's yeah. on his way up. And like those Garrett knows what he's doing with that. You know what I mean? Yep. And he picked them personally. He saw that and he worked, worked with them and molded them into like cool ass people that they are now, you know? So dope. So, I love it. Yeah. And being part of that and seeing it firsthand and like 
never expecting anything like that. And now I'm best friends with those guys. And like, that's where I, that's who I go ride with. And like, that's my crew. It's like, Holy shit, this is, is this real you life? Know, sometimes <laughs> I have to step back and yeah, and actually appreciate it. And these yeah. last five, six months off the bike have definitely given me an appreciation, you know, of like, this is what I love and I'm going to give that's it so my good. all for as much, you know, I want to be part of this forever. Like BMX is the shit. That's what's up. Dude, I'm thinking of that that moment when they all walk up to you. The first thing they said, what size frame you want? It's like, all right. <laughs> I know. And, you know, and like that's, fuck. and I knew them all. We were homies, but still that's pressure. Like in a way, like, holy shit, you guys yeah, are like, that shit gave it was you so natural. Dude. <laughs> yeah, it was natural though. It was just so cool. And like, didn't even seem like it was, it was just yeah. like, oh, these are my boys, you know, and they accepted me, brought me right in. And like I said, since day one, it's never been like, yeah, you got to do this or you got to post this or do this or make it just they're like they know i work full time they're like bro whenever you come meet up come meet up he lets me know what's going on if they're going on trips he's like you can get days off come link up we'll get your flights like all okay. that kind of stuff you I know that. so and what's now your, i get to be uh, in videos yeah <laughs> and you, the, the clips in the videos are no joke it's pretty fire it's so sick to see and it, every time your clip comes up I'm, i have a little sense of like I know that guy pretty well. You know, I've been know I've been knowing Matt Clausen for years, man. You know, it's cool because <clears throat> I get I have like a pretty cool experience with you. you no, know, seeing where you came from, you know, like I seen you as just this like excited kid looking yeah. up to Maloof and Westcott and like, yeah. And there was you know like sure a few was. dudes yeah. that were super influenced on you, and I could tell. And yeah. I was in Phoenix a lot during those times we were filming Forever Rolling, yeah. and like I got to see you get your VX and like. I seen the spark, you know, and it was cool yeah. to see like, all right, this dude's going to be involved for a long time. Like he's got, he, he's got the passion, like yeah. this dude's in it. I, and, I figured out you can't really, it's, I mean, you can, but I figured out that I wasn't making a living from it. And I was like, I'm still doing it, you know? That's, yeah. That's and you started making yeah. videos and like yeah. helping the scene, you know, and doing those kind of things. And like, it's something small, like a homie saying, Hey, I want to make a DVD that'll just get everyone hyped. And now everyone's down to meet up when they're off work or like, whenever yeah. they're free and next yeah. thing you know everyone's like got this little project this little thing they're working on and it's like outside of your circle it don't mean shit and no one cares but <laughs> yeah for you real. guys it's like oh we got this cool <laughs> little thing you know what i mean and it's like oh that's facts dude no yeah. one gives a shit it's amazing yeah no one cares and that's yeah. what i you know everyone's busy for like, real <laughs> so if you find something thing. that you're into and it makes you excited it's just fucking send it and keep going that way like yeah yeah it's so fun explaining to people who don't know about bmx like at all like so what do you what do you do and i'm like well, i ride bikes and try and do tricks like on spots and they're like what's a spot and it's like i don't know you're driving down the street look around for like stairs and rails and stuff they're like huh all right cool, yeah. <laughs> cool story I have, uh, <laughs> like because i work a pretty normal job like well kind of normal i'd say i help uh manage an off-road rental company in vegas so it's like Sick. i'm Good office manager i do a lot of stuff in there and um so it is normal but at the same time it's not like a normal job like i'm People are coming out to have fun. They're on vacation. They're going to do off-roading. Like I get to facilitate fun at work all day That's in a way. Dope. Same thing yeah. I would do with my homies riding. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. try to I'm make sure get, I get them hyped. Do this and, and this. Yeah, and yeah. It's going to so, be so sick. Yeah. Um, but with that, like I'm around the, I guess you would say like general public a lot more than the average BMXer just because yep. of I work 40, 50 hours a week and I have to manage these people and be a normal person at work, you know, all day. Yeah. And uh, hello, sir. How are you? Yeah, exactly. You know, that, <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. Um, but it's like, uh, it's crazy when I, like you said, trying to explain or like when I tell them I'm going somewhere, I'm like, yeah, I went to New York and they're like, Oh, did you go do this, this, or this? And I'm like, nah, like we pedaled from Manhattan over the bridge to Brooklyn, went over to Queens, like caught the subway back. Like, I don't like, know. That sounds exhausting. <laughs> yeah. But for us, it's like the coolest thing ever. You yeah. know, pedaling through New York City is one of the best experiences ever. And it's yeah. like, so yeah, just those kind of things of like trying to explain to the average person of, well, I mean, like I said, maybe it's not meant to be, and we can try our best to get people hyped on it and show them. And, yeah. you know, if they ain't into it, fuck it. We'll just keep yeah. going and doing us. They're like, oh, yeah, I love mountain biking. And it's like, no, <laughs> it's like picture a little kid's bike. And yeah. they're like, aren't you a little old for that? Why aren't you a little so tall small? for that? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them, a lot of them at work will be like, when are you getting in, you know, motocross or when are you getting a motor? <laughs> yeah, dude. <sighs> <laughs> it's the struggle of being in your 30s riding BMX still. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I love it. Honestly, I feel younger now than I did when I was like 28. Have you ever gone through a fat phase? Um, I mean, I was at one point like 15 pounds heavier than I wanted to be, but that was probably a, the biggest wake up sign I had. Nice. Um, caught it early. Yeah. Like, I think just like you said, I feel better now 
late twenties through 33 than I did in my early twenties. Nice. Um, a lot of factors being included, you know, diet, mental health, like being in a better place. Um, you know, just a lot of things like that add up. You don't think about it when you're young, but it's like, now that I'm older, I take better care of myself. My home life is much more stable. Yep. Like a lot of things like that. I can focus more on riding and then I feel better. And you know, those okay. kind of things all matter. That's Whereas when I was younger, I was like, fuck it. Del Taco's got two for one fucking bean <laughs> yes. burritos. I'm going to get a 40 and we're going to party and then we'll go ride tomorrow. You that know, a 21 like, year old dude. Yeah. Shit. And it was now I'm like, all right, I'm going to make a nice meal. Like get some, stay hydrated, stretch, yeah. you know, and it, so a lot different. But, That's real. Yeah. I mean, I, I would like almost give advice to 21 year olds to do the hydration and eating well thing. But at the same time, it's like, you can kind of get away with it when you're that like young. Yeah. Until for you sure. can't, can't yeah, do yeah. it anyway. Take advantage like, wake up of that and you're for like, sure. Dude, yeah. I was driving back from uh, California the other day or last week, whatever. Uh, I Something about road trips makes me feel like, ah, f- fuck it. And so I drove through Del Taco on my way out of town and get, got, you know, two tacos and some French fries, which is French fries is like yeah. the worst, worst food possible that you could eat. Um, and then as I'm getting closer to Phoenix, I'm like, fuck it. And I go drive through Taco Bell. And uh-huh. so to oh, it, your body was just like, dude, yeah, the oh, next yeah. day, my whole back was tight. And like, and I had been drinking in, in California. Like, oh, yeah, it was I was the like, drive to sitting in yeah. the car. Yeah. So I, I like, I had to do the old man regimen. I went and got a IV hydration. I went and did like sauna, cold plunge. I'm chugging water the whole time. I'm like, just fucking feel better, dude. Like, I just want to feel If you would have like, when you were 20 something, someone would have told you that you'd been like, yeah, right, dude. I can eat whatever. I <laughs> For real. Like, it's wild. Yeah. What are you, what are you, a little softy? You can't eat Taco Bell? <laughs> what are like, you, you know? soft? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, pussy um, dude? Yeah. And, <laughs> Um, kind of what I was talking about earlier with you, you know, it's cool to see. And I feel like there's a couple guys that were like in your same age range, like, um, yourself and like sauce, um, a couple other guys that I could tell were super influenced by my generation, like the trip stuff, like miles, Ty, Tony, Maloof, oh, yeah. um, you know, Westcott. And like, I could see like the influence, um, even with like the common crew, like that generation of like your guys' age range and a little younger was like, to me was the most like they seen they had seen deadline they seen all these examples of what to do right and like took it to the next level and all those guys started turning pro really young started you know, like doing the right you know kind of showed a path whereas before the videos we were watching growing up was like party fucking jump off shit go yeah. crazy and i loved it that's what i grew up watching and that's what i wanted to do and that's what got me into bmx you know was the core fun aspect of it yeah and then once like you know, the video started coming out in like 2010 later. And like, I was like, Oh, the people that were young watching that, like sauce, you, like I was saying, like that age range, you guys were killing it with the cameras right away. And it was like super cool to see that you guys had this like whole drive of like, I'm going to make cool videos. We're going to use cool music, like get the crew together. And it was like, I think deadline had a big influence on like, you know, the trip, like that whole era of street riding. Yeah. Created a cool generation. It was for me, it was like, how old do you think I am, by the way? 28, 29. Thank you very much. I'm turning 33 tomorrow. It's my birthday no tomorrow. Yeah, we're the same so, generation, oh. dog. So when you were graduating <laughs> so college, sauce is below me. So when you're graduating college, I should have been graduating college. <laughs> yeah, you freaking loser, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but Maloof That's and cool. Westcott were such a huge influence on me. You're not wrong about that. And I consider myself close with sauce. You know, he's, yeah. he's, infinitely old with with his wisdom you know we yeah love, he's the man the dude. but i remember a specific moment because maloof had that house which was like five minutes away from my parents house and it was like the mm-hmm. the gully arizona like west crib. side of phoenix right yeah and yeah. i remember i still remember a specific moment that i walked in to hang out with them and they were both just like facing each other at the table with their laptops like capturing footage or editing footage and reviewing stuff and i was just like had that like oh that's what i want to do and yeah then, so from there like and then Filming wise, like Maloof, um, Deadline, then Happy Medium. Like I just oh, yeah. wanted to, I wanted to get good at filming. Anything I try to do, I like obsessively try and get good at. You know. And yeah, yeah. So filming became my thing. Now it's like I kind of don't care that much with with the BMX stuff, but mm-hmm. I still care a lot about like fisheye and friend. I think my standards are just like up here. 
when the, the v, the VX that I'm stuck filming with, you know, it's fucking. Yeah. I, <clears throat> I, I mean, we all change. Like I used to love the crunchy raw, like, but now I love a nice tight film, long angle. That's just like perfect. Shows a spot, yeah. nice lead in, you know, Tony's pretty um, spot on with that shit too. So that's yeah, feel so, good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like getting to film with him is pretty, pretty surreal, honestly. And I came from, I've been through up and down stages with filming, you know, like I, I came up, um, like just filming with the homies, like a little camera, you know, yeah. watching videos. Like I grew up watching the fit videos. Mike Aiken was like who I wanted to be, you know, like that was my hero. Yes. And, then, and then watching the fit videos, it was like, oh, look at Edwin and Homan, like I'm watching Homan do these big tail lips, gap to rails. And I'm like, damn, that's cool too. So I want to, do turn downs and jump shit and be stylish, but I also want to go tail whip and hit rails, like you know. So, yep. and then watching that, I just started like I just got a camera, learned, got a little laptop, started learning how to edit and Hell yeah. filming my homies. And this was during like MySpace days, and so I had no outlet, and we just started putting videos on our MySpace pages, and like that <laughs> oh, was yeah. how I got noticed, kind of. Sick. You know, Kyle Carlson hit me up like, hey, do you want to quit making stuff for MySpace and actually <laughs> have like a reason great. to film some stuff? And I was like, that's very sure. Kyle what's wrong with MySpace? <laughs> you know, like I didn't even know really. I mm -hmm. was like, I don't know. I'm making videos. I learned myself. So nothing's wrong with MySpace, dog. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's so Kyle Carlson. <laughs> like he's then, fucking blunt. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. And from yeah, Kyle helped out a lot in my younger days and uh, he helped me out with Vital. I kind of had some dudes from there film with me and then. I had known Tammy from growing up in San Diego and just contacted back through social media. He started coming to stay with me a lot in Vegas. I would go with him in San Diego and, you know, filming with like Tammy and LaShawn, Maloof, those guys are like really particular about like filming and they mm -hmm. know how they want it to look. Even in those days, like 10 years ago, Yeah, this is longer than 10 years ago. Shit. For real. Um, they were like super on it. And so here I'm at like, I got to almost fake it. Like, yeah, I fucking know what I'm doing too. Like, <laughs> and so I had to make them feel comfortable when they handed me the camera. Cause I knew they were going to do crazy stuff. So like, I'm like, no, all no, right, of course. Yeah. I got yeah, this, yeah. 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 Color's good. Shit looks good. All right. You know, like, <laughs> and then quickly learned, like, I feel like if you show me the right way one time, like I'll try to remember it, you know? And so I started quickly learning th through those guys and it put like a pretty high standard right away for me of like, this is how it should look. This is what you should be doing. Like, don't do this. Like, Certain things yep. that you wouldn't really know until you film with somebody like that, you know. But then once you know, you kind of take it for granted. Like I had a buddy take a portrait of me the other day and he had my head like this low in the frame. And I was just like, dude, <laughs> what is this? You know, what is it? I, did, yeah. I didn't say anything, but I was just I should have said something. I thought about it. Yeah, but you fact, but. but growing up around <laughs> all the dudes we grew up around, you're like, oh, he's got it. Yeah, for real. You, know, you feel comfortable handing the camera over to them. And, and like with fisheye, for example, like there's little things that you can't, that you don't want to do, like just point it directly at whoever's doing the thing the whole time, you know, just, you <laughs> yeah. want to have them little come ins through and the outs and Yeah, Things that I was lucky to be around the guys I was. And, and then like, you know, I moved to Vegas, um, the little squad out there, no real filmers or anything. So then I got my own VX 1000 started being that guy, like trying to get everyone together, like yes. started making stuff and, trying to like create a little scene and do videos and then um, bring that standard that I learned from those guys and keep it going. You know what I mean? And start teaching all the other dudes. And then that all kind of led into me writing, getting put on fiend. And then it's like, okay, now I'm with these so, guys. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. And now it's been, I think, yeah, since 2016 and damn, that's seven yeah. years of fiend. I know it's pretty crazy. Time flies, dude. Like damn. COVID, like you've said it before. I think like COVID was nuts. Like, it was like it a really before was. and after almost, yeah, you know? Just, okay, wake up, you know? Yeah, it's like yeah. pre, like, you know, BC and <laughs> before yeah. COVID and after COVID. But, yeah. So. Did they show on like local news, your local bar areas completely ghost towned? Did that happen to you yeah. guys too? Because um, that happened to us in Phoenix. Honestly, I don't know if this will ever happen again. So we took advantage of it. The strip was shut down for like a month straight. So yeah. every casino was boarded up. There was zero people on the whole Las Vegas strip. And we found this one parking lot and we would all just drive down there, park and just ride the strip empty and just so cruise. Dope. It was like and a ghost. Finally, you like, can ride the spots. Yeah. And it was, yeah. dude, it was like, uh, what's that movie? I am legend or whatever. Yeah. Like Will Smith. That's <laughs> yeah. what it felt like. Like we're just riding through these big ass casinos and zero people around and the security guards would pop up and be like, Oh, what are you guys doing here? Like, I'm oh, pedaling around. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. Just don't stop here. <laughs> just keep going, you know? And we're like, all right. So yeah. like I have pictures of wall riding the boarded up doors of Caesar's palace and stuff. And like, that's dope. Yeah. 
2020 right. and you know all the downs there was like i fuck i had some injuries that year obviously the world was crazy there's a lot of weird stuff that year but like when i look back i'm like i had a pretty good year like i took advantage of every way i could you know what i mean yep so 100 percent yeah. What about outside of BMX for you, like 2020 wise, what'd you take advantage of or do? Um, there was like, I mean, since I work so much, like getting two months of unemployment and like paid, like I was getting paid by the government, you know, take advantage of that. Why not? Like everyone yeah. is. And so I used, I filmed that video part in those two months. I nice. had no work and I was like, schools are shut down. Buildings are shut down. I was like, I'm going to take advantage of weather's nice in Vegas right now. Yep. So I just went out every single day of those two months. So we went out every day and just filmed. And I ended up putting that video part together. The With, dig uh, 2020 the part. One, yeah. That's yeah. A, through that time was, yeah. So I just took oh, advantage yeah. of it. I was like, shit, I, I'm going to get paid and there's nothing else. Everything shut down. Like we were going into every single high school in Vegas. Like I would pick one and we'd just get in nothing in there. Go find another one. And like, Sick. we were just, I was just pinning everything I could that year. Exploring. Mm -hmm. There's still, dude, I've lived here for 22 years I, there's still high schools that i haven't been to that i'm like eh, sh all right maybe we'll check yeah, that one check out. it yeah. you know you can't and stomp then, clay johnson though dude <laughs> i i I'm like, spot god or what yeah, I'm, yeah and i'm yeah, i don't i like don't think about it that much but yeah he's been here for he's like i've been here for fucking ever yeah <laughs> he probably does know he's I, like if you send a picture he just content to tell you what school he's like yeah, yeah. i've been there yeah i'm like yeah, yeah. i'm so excited i found this new like cutty thing and he's like yeah that's right off of indian school on 32nd street i'm like god damn it i can't stop yeah. there. <laughs> sorry to interrupt you though no was... and i mean speaking of clay like shit getting to work on forever rolling with those guys was like cool yeah being the asked story's to be part of that. that you know what's so, your highlight from that those days they're filming filming for that oh uh, probably our albuquerque trip um it was like we, I think six or seven of us and we stayed in a motel six, one room for a week. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And it, like, when I look back now, I'm like, dude, how do we do that? But mm -hmm. at the time it was so fun. Like the room next to us was a pimp staying all week. He had girls working in and out. Wow. Like, the owner or the guy managing it was like, you guys want to stay here for a week? We're like, yep. <laughs> He's like, all right, like, sure. <laughs> and like that, the spots in Albuquerque, have you ever been? Oh yeah. It's yeah, spots, Albuquerque. yeah. People like I was just on a good one that trip and like I filmed a bunch of stuff, got mm -hmm. the last uh clip from my part there. Like so just a lot of cool stuff from that trip. And I okay. felt like that one was like our first like outside of San Diego, Phoenix, Vegas. Like that was like our first like team thing that we did, you know, to film for the video. So it yeah. was it was cool. <laughs> Super cool. Especially the DIY aspect of it. I guess it's like kind half and half DIY, but it's it's all like LaShawn and Tammy, this, yeah. their, their gumption of like, all right, let's fucking do this. You know, they got and the backing of Blunted, but all, it's like, that was still them DIY. making shit happen. Um, yeah. I think the aspect that made it almost seem not DIY was, was they took it so serious and they did have such a high standard that it was like, yeah. we don't give a shit who's backing us. We're going to make this look professional because we care about this. Yeah. You know, 100%. And so Which is it so was dope. cool. It's good yeah. to be around. Yeah. And I was lucky to be a part of that and like put my all into that. Like I was so broken those days like i used to stay at my sister's house in temecula and i would like take greyhound buses to phoenix like once a month wow. like it's just fucking i probably took like 10 greyhound trips filming for that video just wow. like yeah. we'd go back and it's like such a shitty trip to phoenix on a greyhound from san diego area it's yeah. like oh my god but yeah i just i didn't have much money at those times like i was just trying to figure it out wanted to ride all the time and lucky like i had homies that were down to let me stay on the couches and for real. you know kind of figured stuff out you know that's and super then, dope yeah. how much is so the greyhound were, 75 bucks Shit. no those days it was like 25 bucks dude one way out of here i remember because yeah, so, i did the same thing but not for bmx i did it for an ex-girlfriend in la and I, I would be broke and still take the greyhound out yeah. to la so i know that you know <laughs> greyhound stories dude <clears> yeah <throat> i had a dude one time hop in the seat next to me in riverside and he's like i tell he just got out of prison you know and i'm talking to him he's like it's like looking at my phone and looking at the cars and shit. And he's like, I just got out 35 years. I was like, Oh, <laughs> like, like today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was cool. But you know, same time I'm like, damn. All right. This is pretty crazy. Yeah. For uh, real. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to 2012. <laughs> we got, yeah, iPhones. seriously. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. But, I had my shit stolen off the Greyhound. Um, I went to LA, but I had my, 
all of my BMX footage on this hard drive. I had my work computer. I think I was working for Sabrosa at the time. And then on my way back, they stopped, they always stopped in Blythe and I needed to mm -hmm. take a shit. And they usually stopped for like 15, 20 minutes. I had done it a couple of times. And um, I was like, so I, I, I left my bag on the bus, mistake, biggest mistake ever. In the seat or whatever. Yeah, in the seat. I was like, I'll be back in five minutes. It's fine. And I'm the bus isn't going to fucking leave me. Then I sprint because I'm like worried about the bag. I sprint to this other restaurant, not the gas station that they were stopping at for okay. to take a shit. I'm, I'm like hustling it up. I'm back in four minutes. And then the bus is gone. Like they got, oh. they, they didn't even get everybody off the bus. They opened, tried to open the door. It was like temporarily closed there. The gas station was on like a, oh, so he just something. kept pushing. Yeah. So they were like, all right, everybody here. Good. Okay. And everybody must've been like, yeah. And then good. And then I, oh. got, like, I'm stuck in Blythe. Like I think damn near overnight. I can't remember how I got back. But I'm calling my sister, go to the Greyhound station, see if you can find this bag, blah, blah, blah. Cause it's like timeless shit. You know, it's all mm -hmm. but luckily tapes, you know, tapes saved wow. my ass. I just went through and recaptured yeah, it. Yeah. Whew, I lost a what? T3i. I lost a laptop. I lost hard drives and oh, <laughs> it's buck. So somebody, somebody scored. Oh yeah. Somebody yeah. Like, swoop. Yeah. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Right. And you know, yeah. they're on a Greyhound, so they ain't doing the best. So that was like a <laughs> yeah. huge come up for them. Yeah. They're like, for real. yes. So somewhere out there, there's a laptop with a bunch of uh, cool BMX tricks on it <laughs> at a pawn shop near you. Yeah, I was going to say probably at a pawn shop. A hundred percent. Yeah. <clears throat> I am curious about like, I don't think I've ever asked you about your beginnings. Like, how did you start riding? How'd you get into bikes? Have you um, always been in Vegas? No. So I grew up in San Diego, like East County, um, El Cajon. It's like when I was growing up, at least late 90s, early 2000s, it was like motocross. BMX skate, like everything was huge there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I grew up like fucking rocket power kid. Like I just did everything. <laughs> rocket and, power kid. <laughs> and when I was uh seven, I had an older sister and she was like 18. Um, she had a boyfriend that raced BMX and he was like really good at racing BMX. And I was just like a little shithead seven year old doing nothing. And he's like, Hey, you want to come to BMX track with me? And so like no training wheels ever or anything. He just put me on his BMX bike. And I started pedaling around like in the parking lot, just started cruising. No, never rode up until that day or anything, I guess, like just from what natural. I was told. Sick. Yeah. And then, so like, then I just, they got me a little BMX race bike, I guess, like a GT or something. And then I just started going to the track with him all the time. Nice. So it was like random 18 year old who was my older sister's boyfriend would just come swoop me up, you know, cause my mom <laughs> yeah. was single mom, like doing her best and shit. So he would just come swoop me up and then take me to the racetrack with him. And then That's my right. mom started taking me all the time. And then that was just like seven through, you know, my mom would take me three times a week, got sponsored, started like going to nationals. And Damn, then that was boy. like my, yeah, that was like my life. Like seven, um, met Nick Long, whose dad Donovan started Phantom racing. And then Nick Long is like huge in racing still and, you know, Olympic Sick. team, all that. And yeah. so Dennis also rode for Phantom racing. Nice. Dennis was like one of my very first friends ever. Like this Get kid. Get the fuck out. That's swear bad. to God, him, him and his older brother, Kenny was my age and they would come stay at my house when we were like seven years old. And then I'd go stay at Dennis's house. And <laughs> so like, we were like, that was like one of my first friends, you know, that my yeah. mom would let me go stay at his house. And like, wow. Dennis says the same thing. Like his mom, Darcy is always talking to me on Instagram. And like, he's like, yeah, you were like the first, I had to like beg my mom to go stay at your house, you know? And like, so it's cool that That's like so we have awesome. that backstory. Yeah. Like I used to go to his house. He had a little, where that huge ramp is now, Dennis had this little like mini bmx race hybrid jump track thing it was like you'd start on the hill you'd come down there's a berm some dirt jumps and like a whole little thing and like my mom used to bring me over there she'd hang out with dennis's mom and just let us ride and then and like that was like my yeah that was like it's my a childhood. hell of a fucking upbringing for bmx dude like dude i know i knew and I, you I raced i knew yeah, it. and i, I looked, see how good you are i'm like i know he's a racer dude and just like almost <laughs> like the story goes like i quit when i was like 13 i just i was expert i was sponsored we had a national and like did the national and was just like, I don't know why I just told my mom, I was like, I'm over this. I don't want to do it no more. And she's like, what? Like you've been doing it your whole life. Like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know. I just want to be a kid, I guess. I don't know. And then, so 13 typical, like started doing shit, like hanging out, smoke weed, like skating, dirt biking, kind of like left my bike, like to the wayside for a while. Yeah. And then like 14, 15, we were hanging out at some dirt jumps and somebody's like, yo, Matt, you used to race. You could probably jump these. And so I just grabbed this kid's bike and was just like, boom, over the biggest jumps. First go, like just started ripping. Hell and yeah. then I was like, oh yeah, this is okay. 
So then I just started bringing my BMX race bike to the trails and just started jumping on my race bike. And then nice. I was like, bro, you're going to die on that thing. You're like, it's going to break. <laughs> and so yeah. then I, you know, started then that, that was like the lead in probably 14. I started like riding freestyle BMX, like super heavy. Like this is what I want to do. And through all through high school, um, I moved to, uh, Vegas when I was 16. So like, um, I would go to Claremont skate park, like ride with all those dudes when I was 14, 15, like, and this is in the early two thousands, you know, like Gary's killing it. Steve Woodward, um, dirt bros were going crazy. Like yeah. Dennis was just coming up. Like it was a pretty crazy thing. And then I moved to Vegas and it was like, I was 16, didn't know anybody just going to the skate park and Nate Berkheimer. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Yes. Used to race BMX for yeah. Diamondback. He saw me at Desert Breeze Skate Park and he was like, dude, you're really good. Do you ever rode dirt jumps? And I was like, yeah, I love dirt jumps. And he's like, you want to come ride TJ Lavin's house? And I was like, <laughs> really? Because I knew he lived there. Obviously, I'm a yeah. little BMX grom. Like, I definitely knew TJ was from Vegas. And I'm like, I like had my mom drive me by his yard before just to look at the jumps, you know? Nice. And so yeah. he's like, yeah, yeah, just have your mom bring you over. We'll have you sign like a waiver and everything. And like, yeah, yeah. And so then oh, I'm like yeah. 16 years old on the rolling at TJ's house with like Cam White and like TJ Lavin and all these dudes. And I'm only like, and then next thing I know, I'm going there like two or three days a week, riding TJ Lavin's house with these Sick. guys. So That's it was unreal. such like a, yeah, it was so random and just how it happened. And then Nate was like, dude, you're, you're killing it. I filmed this like vital BMX video. And then he's like, you want to ride for Diamondback? And I didn't have oh, any of the yeah, offers. Yeah, you were on Diamondback. Yeah. God. So I had like I had nothing going on at the time. I was like, fuck it, let's do it. And yes. then it ended up being super cool. Like, you know. Yeah. No shame in Diamondback, dude. My first now sponsor people was can GT, say dude. what they let's want, go. you know, about corporate stuff. And I'm sure there's been bad deals and like even the way it all ended kind of sucked. But while it was happening, like our team manager, Mike Hammond, I still talk to him on Instagram today. Like he was super cool, down to earth. Like it never felt once like it was a corporate thing. Like Oh, yeah. It was Diogo Canina, Darren Reed, myself, like, you know, it was just this yeah. cool squad. And so like, I got to go to Seattle all the time when I was in my, I was 21, like just fucking getting to do this thing with Diamondback, went yes. to Brazil, Taiwan, like when did all this cool stuff. Fuck yes. And, that's incredible. Yeah. And that, that was like, really like, okay, this is BMX. Like, this is what it means to be like on a team. And yep. so that was kind of my intro to all that stuff. And that's rad. Yeah. So that was a big help. And that was all through just Nate seeing me at Desert Breeze Skate Park, you know, and it's unreal. Like, hey, yeah. you want to ride TJ Lavin's house? And, <laughs> so, and they just all led into that, you know. What was your so impression high... of TJ Lavin when you hung out? Dude, he's the coolest dude. He's like, he's so like raw and like his humor is just so like, he's no filters. Like, Makes it's hilarious. Yeah. He's one of those dudes you're around him and you're just like, damn like okay <laughs> okay <laughs> but you laugh and even the dude getting made fun of is gonna laugh because it's like there's no i don't know he's just yeah. he's awesome he that's, taught me like rad. all right he gave me like i could tell like he had a cool head and like he just i could tell he'd been through a lot and like he'd had a, a different perspective of life than a lot of people i'd met because he had been through so much you know what i mean so it was cool to like get to be around somebody of that caliber i guess you could say when i was For so real. young damn. you know you're learning life from like life rather than being in, you know, a school studying the shit. It's, it's yeah. Dope. And yeah. yeah. So, I mean, with school, I just pretty much did the basics. I like showed up, made sure I passed the test and just got my degree. Like just got a high school degree and said, I'm good. Like that was school yeah. was like, I just couldn't wait to get out to go ride. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then once I was in my junior year and I'm riding TJ Lavin's house, of course I want to get the hell out of school. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I'm going to me ride at TJ Lavin's, Lavin's house yeah. after this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was super cool. And, um, definitely a big learning experience and, you know, a cool yeah. point in my life for sure. So, you so know. tell me those, you named some pretty dope spots. What'd you like? What was Brazil? Like what was, uh, where else did you say? Taiwan? Um, I went to Taiwan and, uh, I went to Costa Rica and this one is like kind of sad with everything that's happened recently, you know, with Pat, of course, rest in peace, Pat. Like I went to fees 2012 and like, I shouldn't even have been on that trip. Like I had no business being on a fees contest trip. It was like <laughs> Drew Bazanson, Pat, Tyler Finagle, like killers. Yeah. Like these dudes, Kevin Peraza, like, and all these dudes, I think Pat was like 17 and Tyler was like 15. And it was like, they were these new dudes coming up and I got to spend this like, four or five days at this resort in Costa Rica with all these guys. And like, 
it was just cool like to be a part of that and like have that memory like i found some pictures catfish was there announcing and like we went to this restaurant and catfish was randomly on the beach you know chilling and yeah. like we just walked up on catfish on a beach in costa rica and like catfish you know and it's like crazy yep. memories like that that i'm super thankful for bmx has given me like these opportunities you know and like these for times real, yeah. so, so I mean, um tell me about pat were you close with him i never, um, never met him i mean obviously not as close as a lot of guys but i met him like he was probably 12 or 13 at claremont skate park at one of the contests back in the day it was probably like my first pro contest like maybe 2007 something like that maybe a little later um he came and he was like doing all these crazy tricks double whips over the box like all this stuff as a young kid yeah and like everyone knew he was going to be something and then shortly after he got put on volume all those things started happening bands you know what i mean and then it was like did he have the um, scene haircut at the claremont thing i saw i was looking at the old edit before that yeah i think it was before that like his dad was there and then there was a Warriors of Wood contest that uh, I don't know if you ever remember those Nyquist used to do them in San Jose. It was like uh-huh. these crazy wood rhythms on this like uh, running track. So they were like dirt jumps, but they were wood and they were super steep and gnarly. And like, it was Warriors pretty crazy. Of wood. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah. And uh, Pat Casey, I think won. I want to say he won. He was Hell doing yeah. these like crazy nosedive, double tail whip 360s. And like, I want to say he won like, and that was maybe 2011, 2010, something like that. Oh, vital BMX is not a thing anymore. <laughs> I just clicked yeah. on the vital BMX link. So yeah, I mean, I got <laughs> to see him younger and then I lived in Temecula when he got his house in Riverside like 10 years ago. And I got to see, you know, the ramp he built and I was really good friends with all the Riverside guys at that time. And so we would go kick it at Pat's house and ride and like pretty much seen him turn into a grown man, you know, like, yeah get married i was kids and then like turn into what he became and it was you know one of those crazy things of like he was that very small percent that does make it you know like right yeah he was, he's that guy like he has the wife and kids and the house and the ramp and like yep. it's that's the dream you know like he did it yeah. and he was always humble super cool like never seemed forced you know and then like as everyone has said like that dude was the toughest dude ever like all yeah. of us watched like send it just no one was making him do that shit like he didn't have to do that for the contest that dude was just doing it for like pure love like yeah boom get up go again go again like yeah. and that's the kind of mentality i try to have when i ride like you're gonna eat shit a bunch of times trying this shit but you're gonna get up and you're gonna keep trying it and i'm probably gonna have to be carried away or something's gonna happen you know but and seeing him was always inspiring and like and then at waffle cup last year um they did like the best trick and like i'm not a contest dude by any means whatsoever and like went out there and I actually got second best trick. So what'd you do? The, I forget. Um, there was like a the little lifeguard thing in the middle and I did a backlash over the top of yeah, it. Yeah, you did. I remember that. And, yeah, and so Pat did a cash roll over it, dude. And <laughs> it was so nuts. That's wild. I've never been on a podium in a pro contest before. And like, of course, the one time I am, he's up there too. Cause he was always on the podiums, you know? Yeah. And so that was a cool, like some, I found some pictures and I was like, man, that was like just cool to see like the smiles and like know that, that vibe like you know and yeah. that i got to share that and i know everyone's gonna take care of his name and like carry it on and you know it's yeah. gonna be a long road and i'm sure it's like not gonna be easy anytime soon for a lot of people but like there's a lot of people out there that are willing to help and you know and that's one of the cool things about bmx is like we grow this community of like people all over the world that are just down to help like yep. doesn't matter what reason you know if they barely know you never even met you you did one trick they liked there, you know what I mean? And right. next thing you know, you need something and they'll all help. So Dude, shit that's, is tragic. That's pretty cool. And it's like waking up to that news is like, it's just, you know, I heard all around the world. Like, Pat yeah, Casey's gone. it's, it's, like, it's hard, man. It's and not even real. Yeah. It doesn't seem real. And it's, uh, for me, it was one of those things of like, fuck, nobody's invincible, you know, like yeah. he was the man. And it's, that's why the hardest thing for me to take is like, he seemed invincible to me. He seemed like a superhero, you know, like he seemed like any crash or anything that would happen, Pat would be cool. Like he'd got it, you know? And so for that to happen, it's like, well, shit, none of us are safe. You know, it's like, (laughs) fuck, it's just, yeah. So it's just, uh, that's been the hardest part, you know, and knowing what his family's going through and, you know, being here with my girl and like talking about it with her and, you know, just knowing, you know, that can't be easy. So you know, I yeah. just want them to know too if that BMX community is always going to be there to help. You know what I mean? And I'm sure forever it'll be something that there'll be, you know, his name is going to live on and he's, you know, 
Yeah. His name is imp- implemented in BMX forever. Like he's part of us, you know, For real. he was BMX. Like yep. he lived, breathed BMX. That's so fuck, man. It's sad. Yeah. Ugh. It's hard um, to talk about for sure. And, yeah. You know, but fuck, <sighs> he deserves, you know, his name to be talked about and he, you know, he's a good dude. Yeah. Definitely a good dude. Rest in peace, Pat Casey, dude. Shit, yeah, man. You know? For sure. Like, yep. It's cool <laughs> seeing the tags out there. Yeah. And for real on the skate park, like the Gary, yeah. Gary clip, the, um, any little thing like freeway. matters, you know, all right. that shit. Yeah. So. We should start tagging up Phoenix. Pat, yeah, man. Everybody who's listening, go tag up something. Pat Casey. Yeah. Where do you go from there? Are you going to have a family? Um, <laughs> you... I mean, it's, it's been talked about. Definitely. You know, yeah. about to be nice. 34 dis- in a few months. Discussions and... are happening. How long have you been yeah. with her? Uh, we What's have lived like? together. <laughs> yeah. We've lived together almost nine years. So like, oh, we're shit. pretty much, wow. yeah, yeah. We're like, we should be married, but You're luckily she's man. cool. She don't care about no titles like that. She's never once pressured me. Like I found a really cool person that not only accepts like the BMX lifestyle and traveling and hurting myself all the time and like doing all these things, but like also never pressuring me in like other aspects of life too. So if you can find somebody like that, fucking keep her. Yeah, try not to fuck her. (laughs) Try not to mess that up (laughs) because uh, it's it definitely helps. And that was one of the things I was talking about earlier with like just life, you know, like being happier at home and having a more stable home life and things like that allow you to ride better, focus more on that and, you know, mm-hmm. take care For of real. yourself. So. so tell me about your last fight with her, dude. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you were about to answer, fool. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I got my girl visiting in town right now and she, she's uh, here for my birthday weekends because it's tomorrow and I was like, sorry, babe, I'm, I'm, I'm podcasting. I'm working. I'm doing shit. You know, <laughs> she's, so she's off with her friends right now. Um, That's cool. But yeah, kids, dude, kids is a, kids. Yeah. Is I give topic. props to any uh, person who can manage life, you know, with that and kids and everything. Cause that's not easy. You know, Clay and Robbie. Yes. They're they're And LaShawn now. I know. Papa but LaShawn is we're coming. Gonna, we're going to see how LaShawn is. I know. I can do it. I know. There's a lot of guys right now. So happy. Nathan, Dak. Yeah, dude. (laughs) A lot of people are, a lot of people are, it's that age, dude. We're we're all starting to realize like, all right, we're in our thirties now. Yeah. I guess we better procreate. Yeah. (laughs) Slip one past the goalie. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Everybody be on the lookout for a baby coming from Matt Clausen pretty soon here. No. (laughs) Oh, man. Dude, a a young Clausen, just another rocket power kid. Yeah, I know. He would be nuts. Man, I'm jealous that you're like, well, you're the place that you have not have to, but that, that you go to to film is San Diego. San Diego is so beautiful. It's incredible. Yeah. Like, and especially during the summer in Vegas sucks. Yeah. yeah. Arizona sucks. San Diego. And then the perfect. other aspect is like, I get to go stay with Garrett. Who's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one has ever put in as much work as finding spots as him. So it's, and then I have Tony to film and Garrett's like really good at what he does and knowing how we all ride and what we like. And so like, he'll always have something to show us. And like San Diego as blown out as it is. Like that dude will still have something I've never seen to show me. Like, I love that. Yo, there's this little spot I found driving through this business complex. Like I think you might like it, you know? And yeah. So that's like, he makes things. I think Johnny kind of brought it up. Like the behind the scenes that he does to help with fiend to make what it is, is like, it's that work you don't see, you know what I mean? Like that really does help. And it's, Goat work, it's pretty dude. cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see. It's very inspiring to be a friend with that guy and like see all the shit that goes into it. And like outside of BMX, like I feel like he helped change the way I work, like dictate my life, like manage myself, you know, like Hell yeah. just That's seeing a, somebody just by example, like, yeah. What? And just being yeah. around him, you know, yeah. and like seeing the way he, his, the way he takes care of himself, the way he approaches things. And he's very like confident in his approach on things and knows what he wants. And, is like doesn't waver much you know and it's like okay like a lot of people should probably learn from that like we're always trying to appease people and stuff and it's like maybe just if you have experience in what you're doing and you have a goal and a vision you should probably just fucking stick be steadfast in what you're doing you know what i mean for real yeah so and like learning that is just like cool like this dude is my age a year younger he's got his own business he's got a home he's doing all these things and he's still riding at a professional level the best and you know so that's like super inspiring and Oh like, yeah. Through being around him, like I said, even outside of BMX, it's like helped the way I've kind of navigated. Positive things, influence. You know? That's so dope. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah, and it's 
so I'm getting secondhand stoked on life trying to do that shit right now through you, yeah. through him, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I get to go on a trip with Johnny, Lewis, you yeah. know, Colin. The Fuck. best fucking guys too. Like, even off the bike, they're so dope to hang out. Yeah, with. yeah. And like, you know, obviously it's like first few times you hang out with people, like we were homies and stuff, but it's like, what, you know, kind of Johnny's quiet over there. Like I'm just me, like not part of the tight inner circle, you know? And then like now though, it's like, we're in a fucking van. We're all just like, just the whole time shit talking, talk like yes. Lewis is playing some crazy ass upbeat music. We're hyphen in the van, jumping yeah. around, like going to a spot, like, Garrett's fucking driving guys like this shit get the bikes out no all right <laughs> on to the next spot like you yep. know and then once the bikes come out it's like fucking Game like time. yeah yeah it's like all right we still have fun with it like it never seems pressured it never seems it just seems natural but like the standard is like all right right we're gonna do some shit yep you know That's what's up. no one's going yeah. half-assed like we're all yeah. in this together and it makes me do shit that like I probably would have done maybe I don't know but like the manual down that 20 stair rail <laughs> <laughs> it's how on, much it's, shit do you have stacked with Tony do you know uh have you seen your timeline most... how what's his process is he showing you timelines we get to see it yeah but oh, nice. um never like never see a thing with a song or any Just time you know I don't it. at least maybe I'm sure Garrett gets to sit down with him and see a lot but it's yeah. like Garrett and his like method is pretty much a stack like Garrett just is always riding he rides more than anybody else he's always riding he's always perfecting and learning tricks and like trying to figure out shit once he figures something out it seems like he finds a perfect spot for it yeah. waits till he finds a perfect spot like he won't force it he has all these tricks in mind so it's like oh this one will work for this one you know yeah. or like yeah. those kind of things he's where... got his tool belt full of shit yeah, yeah, that he for sure. just put on <laughs> i wish i could yeah. do that noise dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah he hits that move and then yeah so with that it's like okay well these guys are all fucking killing this i'm gonna sit back because i know i don't have anything like this for the spot right so i just sit back and i just lurk and like wait and i'm like i get antsy you know because i'm like all right, all right, all right and then i'm like all right, i'm gonna go jump off this shit i'm gonna go do this you know? and it's like, i'm gonna go do this and then luckily it usually works out and like <laughs> like all right cool all right let's go <laughs> yeah and then i sit down again and watch them all go crazy <laughs> on the ledges and stuff and then you know it, it works and their, it's like I've, their tech writing is like god level it's kind of insane I, yeah I, and, you know. it and you're me very like, technical but like you but know. when you're sitting at a spot with colin johnny gary yeah, like <laughs> i can't even it's laughable uh, dude yeah like seriously you'll you'll sit there like you are right now and just laugh like yeah. you'll just shake your head and laugh out of amazement, pure bliss that you get to be over there watching it. You For know, it. like it's just it, like, dude, this is awesome. This you're is just watching cool. a video game in real life. Like that's yeah. kind of it becomes almost like surreal. Like I started to get detached because I was filming Matt Ray too much and just watching him ride in person is mm -hmm. like watching a robot. Like AI, just everything is super dialed and every every try and even just like big ass bangers but i'm sure it is the same yeah. with, with those dudes like all right so, and, then, and speaking oh. of that filming with matt those were two cool ass videos you made i want to say that matt and Ray then, yeah, yeah the sabrosa vegas video yeah we got to spend one. some time doing that one because you yep. were you know out here and that one is like i still will go back and watch that one and it's like there's editing stuff in there that people don't do now. You know what I mean? Like it's all black and white for Sabrosa. We got the sky blue and a lot of stuff. Yeah, and like, I kept the, trying to push color on Sabrosa. Too. Yeah. And it's like, it's really cool though. It's like, yeah. it was cool to see. And I, and that was one of the aspects I was talking about of like, all right, this is the, this dude took some innovation through his own little thing on it. And now this is what we have. You know what I mean? So well, thanks man. Yeah. It was Shit. definitely, yeah. Appreciate dude, that. Yeah. That video came out really good and, and seeing I, that kind of stuff was cool. That was like, I think one of the first, I, I got to play around with film in HD with those cameras for a little bit, but then like, that was the first, like, all right, okay, let's go. And then yeah, it all, it all kind of worked out. Um, I felt like I filmed like shit every single clip, but what, looking back, I'm like, this is up to par, yeah, cool. you know, yeah, up yeah. to snuff. Did your thing. Yeah. yeah not too, <laughs> not too shabby. That was the Did trip that they, they all started calling me Sasquatch. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Cause I'm just, I was big and I was starting to get a little bit chunky. I remember and, uh, what did the yeah. LaShawn eat? Like Bobby bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> that was like uh West guy and like the yeah, Bobby bobblehead. <laughs> Bobby bobblehead, man. Shit. That brings back memories, man. It's wild. When I can't try to remember like when the Vegas trip was, was 2015 uh, or 14. Probably 2014. I think that yeah. was the year I moved to Vegas. So. Wild. Sheesh. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Go watch Sabrosa in Vegas. I think my favorite part is Simone. Just filming Simone is fucking incredible. And yeah, man, oh, God. I love them. I love them all. I love the, yeah. all the, all the Sabrosa boys equally. But. Man, and that was like Simone like was killing it. Mm-hmm. There was nobody even close to that yeah, at that like, time. For real, like ahead of his time. Yeah, this yeah. This is pre all of his other videos that changed. Like it's uh-huh. kind of crazy to think how much Simone just like went like this. And then everybody's like, hold on, that's dope. And then they yeah, start yeah. doing his shit too. Everyone picked pieces from it for sure. Yeah. You could tell. His little even the established dudes were like yeah that's tight so i'm gonna start doing some of that for real yeah <laughs> <laughs> who was who's your influence lately like who are you getting motivated by right now um you got a lot of time off say, the bike. a lot of time off the bike what are you i, know, doing? I would who say uh nathan yeah just like his he's been in it just as long as i have longer been a pro like way longer you know like putting yeah. out video parts and he still is putting his whole body, soul, like everything into it. And when he puts out a video part, it's like top, you know, it's going to be. Um, so like him, Dakota, um, Garrett, you know, pretty. And it's like, I mean, it's almost cliche. Like everyone can say those guys. But when you watch what they're doing and stuff, yeah. it's like there's a reason they're where they're at, you know. And it's 100%. And for like 20 years, damn near, like yeah. all, of, all of them. And like they're it, my yeah. age. And so it's like it's super motivating to see. And like, I think BMX is in a cool spot right now where when we were coming up, a dude was 25 and he was like out, you know, it was like, well, you're 25, you're, (laughs) yeah, peace, you're fucking broke everything, you're out, like 16 year olds are coming in, dude. And now there's not really any, like, the guys who are over 30 are like all the top dudes. You look at X Games, it's like everyone's over 30 right now. I'm, have no... Like, I don't see the door yet. Like, yeah, I'm seeing all these people at the skate parks. It's like an older crowd of dudes who either quit and now have a job and bought a bike and got back into it or like just stayed with it and just now feel like it's more accepting and welcome right. um, for like just the average dude to have it as a hobby and not try to be like a pro. You know what I mean? Yep. And so I think it's at this point now where like it's good for BMX because those are the people who will buy stuff like those are guys with jobs and with money. And they'll buy parts and like if they like something they'll go buy it and if it's only 16 year olds who are riding bmx like they're going to just keep asking for free stuff and like want discounts you know things like that which not hating on them i was broke at 16 too you know and Mm -hmm. my mom was broke she couldn't buy me shit so it was like you know you got to hustle and try to do what you can but i think we're at this point now where we've like allowed bmx to be accepted by an older crowd you don't have to be pro you don't have to be the best guy ever you can just be a homie kick it you do a trick that makes you happy. We're just as hyped for you. And like the Vegas scene is like really built around that. And I can see it like spreading out a lot. Like, fuck yeah. Just grown ass dudes buying stuff at skate, you know, buying bikes and like yeah. going out. <laughs> Whereas great. like they would quit and go buy mountain bikes or like, you know, go buy car stuff. And it's yeah. like, I want to see dudes in their thirties weekend or BMXers. Like, yes, for and real. so it gives me motivation to stick with it. You know, like, Yep. If they only see 20 year old dudes doing, they're going to be hyped on them. Like when you're in your thirties, you don't give a shit what a 20 year old kid is doing. Yeah, for real. You know? So yep. when you see grown ass dudes doing it and you're like, Oh, this is cool for grown ups to do. Yeah. Um, you know, like then you're like, all right, I'm going to go buy a bike again. I love this growing up. Now I can go hang out. They're not going to be dicks to me at the skate park. They're going to be accepting, like yep. help me out if I need help, you know? And I think we've come to a point where it's like, I think it's going to grow BMX. You know what I mean? Yep, I think for a long 100%. time we were targeting the young audience. Like, how do we get these kids involved? How do we get these kids involved? It's right. like, no, like this is a lifestyle. Like we're going to be doing this for a long time. And I want people to do it because like they appreciate the lifestyle and like, not just because they want something out of it, you know? And yep. if, and I think skateboarding does a really good job of that, you know, keeping people involved, um, giving them jobs, like keeping the scene, what it is. And like, I think we're, rounding a curve now in bmx where it's like all right the right people are being judges at contests they're getting the right jobs like we're bringing in like a i think it's gonna and i mean i could be wrong but i think i see like i see positive in the near future of bmx like hell yeah 
That's so refreshing that's to I hear. Because yeah, you, yeah. you don't hear that often. That's great. Yeah. And then with Johnny, like what he was saying about the video game shit, mm-hmm. like I'm all about that. Yeah, like, that was, that was think, good. Because when I look back at my childhood, I didn't even really skate that much. And I knew all the skaters because of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Like yep. it introduced me to a lot of cool music. Yep. Um, like just a lot of stuff. And and you can't ride all the time. Like you got to have downtime. And I think that's a way to get people involved for sure. Like making for it real. cool and accepting in a different you know yep. way. So... Dude, and then thinking about just like the future of video games and shit. Like, where's I was just oh, thinking VR about like, what's, and... yeah, what can this BMX game be all about? <clears throat> yeah, the pipe one is still. I see clips of it, and I'm like, that looks pretty fun, you know? Like, it looks pretty fun. Yeah, it's I suck at it. Like, I try. Funny story when we were doing the Vegas trip here, we were filming for Dark Days, um, here in Vegas, and uh, we were staying at my house, and we were playing pipe and stuff, and Johnny's like, I never played that. Five minutes later, he's like the best anybody's <laughs> ever seen at this video game. And it's just like such a thing with Johnny. Like that dude is whatever he picks up, he'll be the best at it within like five minutes. He's like the Kendama thing. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. the Kendama thing. He just grabbed it. Oh, what does this do? Oh, did I break it? You know, like he's just doing all this cool stuff. Oh, and did I like, break it? And he's doing flippity dippities <laughs> and shit. <laughs> yeah. So then it's like, holy shit. Same with the video game. I never played this. Whoa, look at that. That was cool. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I love that kid. It seems like he's coming out of his little shell a bit and I'm stoked to see it. You know, like he he was pretty quiet and reserved as a young kid, but now he's like Johnny and he's like, yeah, he's got his own little thing going. It's super cool to see. see. Yeah. And the other thing I like to see is he's like, uh, not afraid to promote what his hobbies are outside of riding. Like I think for a long time, pros were kind of scared to say what they were into in a way of like, it might ruin their image. You know, like if a dude was into fitness or, whatever it be outside of BMX, I think a lot of people didn't really put that out there. Yeah. But they're like lame. Think, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I was guilty yeah. of it. Yeah. I thought BMX was the coolest shit in the world. And I was like, you do that. Like, woo. Like, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like it was just like, but now like with him, he's like super into MMA and like, you know, taking care of himself and fitness. And like, he's promoting that. And he's also going about things in a way of like, not so corny as like UFC fighters calling out other fighters. And like, I'm going to knock you out first round. But he's like out there, like tagging X Games, like, bro, I'm ready. Like, yep. I'm, I'm like, let's get it. Like, you know, and it's in yep. a cool way of like, and I've never really seen any other young pro. Yeah. Come on, baby. This is Johnny, like, baby. Yeah. So sick. And so it's cool to see like him go from the quiet kid, not saying anything in the van. So he'll you kick know, your fucking then, ass now. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. We start, we, we wrestle on, we're, I always wrestle with him and he's fucking. <laughs> He pins me every time of course every time, but i still go for it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i still have to try he's on the jujitsu mats like how do you do this and then five minutes later just like yes exactly out. he's All got right. you twisted yeah. up like a pretzel like did i do it right yeah <laughs> <laughs> am i doing it right <laughs> yeah. yeah and dude. like uh yeah so it's cool to see him not only come into his own but like not be afraid to promote like this kind of new way of like you know i'm a pro bmxer like i'm gonna put my all into this not yeah. afraid like who cares if people call him a try hard because he's naturally just wanting to do it yeah. it doesn't seem corny or cheesy it doesn't seem like a try hard right you know because he owns it it's just yeah. positive it's positivity and it's like right this is me and then bitch. the shit the outcome it, yeah is it is what it is you can't deny it so it's 100%. like 100 percent. all right well that God, works he's, inc- he's fucking incredible man what yeah. a human being just yeah the, garrett picks him he knows how to pick him dude um, I, that's what i was saying that man knows he's he's pretty good What's your, uh, what's your MMA or your outside of BMX thing? If you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I wish I had more time, like since I have like a full-time job, you know, I work 40, 50 hours a week. Like I focus on BMX. Um, and then like just pretty much like home life and like making sure like I put enough time towards like my girl dog life to where when I do want to do the BMX shit, it doesn't seem like it's hindering like our life or you know what i mean time management skills is like something i learned you know and i think pretty much just appreciating the downtime and like doing cool shit like we went to san diego in between my two surgeries and i couldn't ride or anything obviously so just like i knew i had another surgery in a week so i was like let's go to san diego for a few days we just cruised the beach like did some little touristy stuff kicked it like you know just check shit out and um i don't know why uh, i'm picturing you not being able to walk but you're able to walk right now, right? Yeah, I'm back. No crutches, <clears throat> no anything. So, um, like, when you just went to San Diego, you you're walking around, right? 
But then yeah, I got yeah. a second surgery and I was back not walking for a while. Yeah, that's got to suck. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Surgery, brace for like two months, got it off for a couple weeks, second surgery, back how in long, the brace. How crutches. long are you off your ass or on crutches? Mm, I was for like two months. Like Shit. of all, like yeah, over combined, the time. Over the time. Yeah. A like a of month time. of a month at the first time. And then, yeah, probably two, three weeks after the ACL surgery and then yeah. started walking with the brace. And, but yeah, like I said, longest time off the bike, just trying to do what I can to, uh, keep myself busy. And, um, yeah, I like talking about mental health. How did you manage? How are you managing? Um, one, keeping myself busy, like just like putting my focus into work and getting myself back to where I want to be. Um, a lot of times you hear like when people fuck their knees up, like, they don't ever, they're never the same, you know, like, and I, right. I don't want to be that. Like I've been able to avoid knee injuries all these years of riding. I finally fucked my knee up, did everything all at once. And it's like at 33, you hear a lot of people like pro athletes or just whatever would be like, Oh, he destroyed his knees done at 33, you know, yeah. like he's old, but it's, <laughs> it's like, all right, I got a few more good years in me. I'm going to just like, I've been focusing on physical therapy, just my health, like everything I can to stay on track to be better than where I was. Like, that's my goal is hell. Yeah. Like, come back better. Yeah. Build and back I know better. It's not, <laughs> yeah. It's not easy, you know, and it's a lot of work and like, I've never been a gym guy. Like I've never, are you a gym guy now? No, but Let's I feel go. like now physical therapy two or three days a week is like the gym. That's you pretty know? gym. Yeah. Yeah. And you should be like a gym guy days, after this. If you want two to days at home, better. I've always been like, a, not always, I should say like five years ago, I started really focusing on stretching taking care of my body, you know, yep. um, I never did that before. And so like, like me and my girl will be watching Netflix or whatever, instead of sitting on the couch, I'd bust out the, yes. the foam roller, the mat and stretch for an hour and a half, you know, oh, and yeah. like push ups, sit ups, always just those, you know, like home yep. workouts, keep myself fit. Um, never took, I just always thought it was weird to go into a building. Like I've never been able to cross that line, you know, <laughs> like it's one of those things. And now I've been at the physical therapy office for almost six months going into two a, days building, a week good. and now it feels natural, you know? Yep. So it is one of those things of like, it's so hard to just take that first step, you know, if, of like, I'm going to like, honestly, to me, I see my discipline to do it at home by yourself. Like that's, that's the Chica. That's where it's at. Yeah. <clears throat> I just feel like I'll walk into this building and I would just like, okay. <laughs> Like I show up at a skate park and it's like, okay, there's that. I can go, I can do that. I can do right, that. Yeah. But it's like, I walk into the gym and I'm like, I don't even know where to start, you know, like, for real. so it is one of those things. Maybe we'll see, you know, like I hang out with Colin a lot and, you know, he's on premium and fiend and he's like really big on health and, yep. you know, stretching, taking care of himself. He's a gym guy. So, um, seeing love that is, guys. love the gym guys. I thought no, Brad but, Sims would be a gym guy, but he's not, he's just a fucking when I was talking Dude, to him, I was insane. like, how do you stay in shape? He's like, honestly, it's kind of genetics, but you know, I yeah. do, I do pushups and shit. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. He stays active though. You know, yeah. I think that's somebody like that. You stay active. You're adrenaline. You're always moving. You're pumping your body. This He's fucking built dude. Ripping. Yeah. Speaking of people to be happy for like Brad Sims, fun. Like we've been, I've been watching him. I know you've been watching him since yeah. shook it's on. Like it's crazy. It's huh? So cool to see him come. And then, bring Colin and Demarcus with it. It's so dope. Yeah. What was crazy and cool to see was that whole like Instagram run he did. Like yeah. no one used social media, I think to their benefit as well as he did. Like right. he created this plan in his head. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, but he just tried it. He's like, I'm going to post crazy shit every day yep. and just do it for a while. See what happens. Maybe so my bad. life will change because of this. Maybe it won't. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. Fucking A. But it I wasn't mean, just that. Like he proactively was reaching out to people oh, and making yeah, shit happen. He, which is so oh dope. yeah. He did it right. And you know, it's hard to stay at that level. Obviously. It's like when you create a standard, it's now that's your standard. It's right, hard to put yeah. out a half ass clip now because you know, you did that. Only bangers. but it created these open, you know, doors for him that like a new life, you know, in a way of yeah. you know, like work sucks, dude. And it's like any way that you can find to create a living that you enjoy is like a big factor in having a happy life. So it's how are you going to hate on anybody who found a way to pursue something that like For is making him a living and he's able to like bring other people into this and who knows how many people fucking never even cared about mountain bikes, see Brad Sims and they're like, Oh damn, that's cool. I'm gonna get a mountain bike. You know, right. like you never know. 
And so I would never hate on anybody doing what they thought was the move and it worked for them. And like, they are obviously happy and it's not hurting anybody else, you know? So yep. I was, I've been telling all the boys, I'm like, you're fucking up filming a DVD with me, dude. You should be posting your bangers on Instagram. Like, honestly, <laughs> I'm looking I've at been telling the- everyone <laughs> stop filming for Instagram. Let's film this video guys. <laughs> <laughs> no videos are over dude oh that's what Unless i keep hearing fiend. no we have a cool little thing going with the vegas squad though we have uh i got like a song's worth on the timeline probably another, like another half Sick. a song's worth that trying to put together this cool little mixtape in my downtime you know I, oh. I got the cameras and i i'm mobile so i'm just like you guys want to ride now. let's yeah, go like let's get it you know so ryan mills um sammy combs he's like a younger homie he's starting yeah. to come up yeah. Uh, Justin know, Stapleton. He's like one of the homies I ride with a lot. He's I like, kind of grew too. up riding with him and then he kind of got out of it for a while. And now he's back killing it. Um, oh, yeah. You know, just cool. To, like bring the cameras out, tell all the homies like, Hey, let's like just film. And there's no reason for it. You know, it's just something that we all want to do. We're all grown ass men. Like, yeah, for real. But it's just like, okay, cool. <laughs> we could do this. Well, let's go. You know? What are you filming with? Um, I have a HMC 150 or whatever. I'm still 720p. <laughs> Gang. That's going sick. for the ns look what about fisheye uh t3i i think it is or whatever i got an old ass oh Canon. nice dude that's my vegas suppressor in vegas setup is yeah. hmc and a t3i with a yeah that's i'm kind of yeah. classic i like it i want the classic. 4k like the 4k panasonic like the yeah. pretty much the, the 4k hmc but yep the, the v- yeah yeah that's a good camera yeah. um easy to film with you know the zoom is a lot like the vx stuff like that so I can't wait to finish this video and get to HD filming BMX. Like, I honestly, I'll just be filming on my phone. I'm a great yeah. iP- iPhone. Like, you could, you know, I was, I went from like, like I was saying earlier, like loving the crunchy raw VX style. Now I love when I see like a crystal clear 4K clip. Like, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Like, yeah. you feel like you're there. It's like, you see their pores. Yeah. Yes, you could see it all. You could you like got feel a hair it on your like, shirt. <laughs> Yeah, be like, damn. Yep. Okay. You can see his hands gripping. You're like, yep. He's coming in hot. He's getting something. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy to see. So, uh, what's your? What are you most proud of in your whole riding career, trick wise? Specific, like mo- trick. <clears throat> and what was your bang in the, in the blunted video? Um, you I did like video. it was like a kink drill, and I did a 180 grind to like cab over the bottom kink, like oh, the yeah, bottom half. Yeah. 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 And it was just like one of those things that was just like the whole night, like everyone was getting stuff. I never drink and ride, like never. And I had already filmed like four or five clips that day. I was done chilling. We had the lights out and everyone was going in. So then I'm just like, got my bike out of the van. I'm a 180 grind this rail. And Sean's like, what? Like, (laughs) it sounds like, yeah. He's like, you sure you've had a few beers, bro? Like you want, I'm like, I'm doing it right now. And sure enough, took me a few goes, but yeah, like 180 grind, cabbed over the bottom, landed perfect. And you then hug like, from everyone, Robbie, dude. Oh, yeah, shit. everyone freaks out, dude, because it was so <laughs> like unexpected, kind of like they didn't yeah. know your cabin. No, it was just like all right. And then I yeah, cabbed over perfect. I knew I wanted to because I didn't want to go down that second kink, but yeah. I was like, I didn't tell anybody. I was like, I'm gonna one of you grind the rail. And yeah, so then everyone <laughs> runs up, hugs, fucking shotgun a beer, like the whole deal. Yeah, it was it's perfect. Cool ends of yeah. video That's yeah, it. yeah so that one there's like a three over ice in my part the that is probably like the like i worked for that one like i know no one had ever filmed it on a street rail at that point so i was doing him at the skate park you know dan lacy was my inspiration behind that obviously like seeing him do it at simple session and another one and then i was like all right three over ice like i love three and over rails like i can i seen him do it it makes sense in my head so got it down on this little skate park rail and then um i couldn't find any rails in vegas to try it on like i was trying to find stuff like nothing would work for it and then there was a rail at um the excalibur hotel and it's like at the hotel where they take their breaks so like it's a super bust you get no time really um so like getting towards the end of the deadline for filming for the video i hadn't done it yet and i was like fuck like i can't get tammy back out here can't get Lashawn back out here like i'm just gonna have a homie film it so I got Keaton Harris, who I've known for a long time, and just brought the VX and a camera on a tripod. And we went there one day after I had to work. So I like got off of work, met him at the Excalibur, 
Um, we had like an hour before sunset, you know what I mean? So like go up, security kicks us out, circle the building on our bikes, come back. There's like two dudes smoking a cig at the top, come back around. And then like, okay, it's clear. Get up there, set the cameras up, try it, try it. I kept like three and over the rail and like just landing both tires heavy because the way I was doing it, I was trying to scope out the rail and I was like tucked up yeah. and I fucking landed and blew both my pedals off the first day, like fifth <laughs> try. Both of the plastic pedals just shot off the spindle <laughs> And I was like, damn. So then I was like, all right, let's come back tomorrow. So work again, go back to work again the next day, fucking charge the cameras and stuff at work, go back to the Excalibur after work. And then uh, we got lucky. This dude was like smoking a joint and he was like, you, you'll, you don't say anything. I won't say anything. So I'm like, cool. Can you just give me like this little area right up here for the stairs? Like, can you just go like right over here? And then we were there for like maybe 10, 15 minutes and like, kept circling doing the three doing the three and then like the one go i'd fucking hit my peg dude i'd three it over it watched it and i just shot that thing down hit it and like you can even see my face like i just opened my mouth like oh shit so then, like, <laughs> we just rushed grab the cameras like haul ass out of there and yeah, yeah that was the last clip i filmed for my part like it, yeah fucking worked two it. days in a row two days going back to it like it was so that Work. one probably of everything yeah of everything, your whole... What about the latest shit with Fiend? Um, <clears throat> Honestly, almost every clip in that one is like, I'm really hyped on. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's... I'm so um, excited, dude. I don't even know what the goal is. Like, I know Garrett obviously has a full parts worth of stuff. Johnny, you know, yeah. Colin probably has a lot of shit. Um, so who knows? Like, I don't even know. Who knows? I love it. I'm just like, I know I ride. can't film no shit. Yeah. And like, they're so cool too. Like, Tony Garrett, they're just like, bro, don't feel any pressure to rush to get back on the bike. Like everything you filmed is fucking amazing. We have enough. Like, hell yeah. You know, just take your time. And That's what's up. never have I felt like they were like trying to get rid of me off the team or anything. You know what I mean? Like yeah. oh, nothing. Shit, he's injured. Let's get him out yeah. of here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the old he's injured. He's fucking Who's next? <laughs> throw him in the trash. <laughs> but man, if anybody deserves it, um, it's you, dude. I'm so happy to see you on Fiend. Like I appreciate that, dude. From That's... from knowing knowing you for however long you've been killing it since I was a wee lad and you were a wee lad. It's fucking dope, dude. And we're, yeah, we're, I likewise, we're I like seeing where you're at you. in life. Yeah. You know, it's cool yeah, to yeah. see uh, BMX or not. Like I love to see the homies doing something cool with their life, and you know, and even with my job, I have like I manage an off road place, and I think a lot of the skills when I got hired there, it was through graphic design and marketing which I never went to school for. I just learned through BMX, you know, That's like what's up. Yeah. making videos, so many skills, learn photo. Yeah. Like I learned all this through BMX, how to manage myself, how to market myself, how yep. to make stuff on Photoshop for videos, you know, all these things that I learned without school and just self taught, self motivated. I never even thought would lead into helping me yeah. with this other aspect. And you know, way more than a kid job. with a marketing degree, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Fucking and wild. even like just, and even past that, like the average person, Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like coming into a job, like yep. we've learned so many life skills through BMX. And like the thing I always come back to when I like get frustrated with people at work or like, like, why can't they just figure this out? Like we have a different mindset. Like we are down to fail a hundred times. That yeah. doesn't like deter us. You know what I mean? It's not like, yeah. Oh fuck. I don't want to try this cause I'm scared to fail. Like right. fuck it. You'll be good. Just try again. Yeah, and you don't enough. even get hurt like get failing in real life like yeah yeah and, like, failing in real life, life is you don't great. Get hurt. <laughs> yeah it's like oh, so shit. much easier you're like dude this is easy this is fucking i don't get a shinner i don't gotta like this is one aspect it's mental oh, like, shinners, so dude. it's not you know it's and i didn't even realize while it was happening it just created this thing of like i became this person of like self-motivated self-driven not afraid of adversity or like new tasks or like you know, yep. a lot of stuff you learn and it teaches you a lot. And I think it's one of those things that like being active, being fit, like we found this really cool hobby that it's all encompassed into one, you yeah, know, for real. And it's, it's pretty it. rare. I think it's pretty special too. And just, yeah. yeah, being, having the BMX like career, whatever you want to call it behind me, whenever I'm like yeah, out in the world and doing, mm -hmm. doing shit, it's, it's we we're special, you know. Us BMXers yeah. we're special, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Dude, you look at look at anyone who moves on to another career. Yeah, like they're like the best. Like yep. any dude who does something else outside of BMX, 
Like they're not like a normal dude. Like they're like the yeah. top of their Joe Simon. Yeah. Um, or like a else? dude, I forget who it is who does the wood tables. I think it's a uh, wow, Jay Miron. I think he does oh, like yeah. woodwork. Fucking and it, it's yeah. like crazy woodwork. Like yep. Top you know, and shit. I think yeah. it's one of those things that just perseverance, determination, not being afraid to fail, yep. you know, and then no if you coach. learn, you, you know, you kind of make it in one industry, you see, you know what it takes in the next one. And you kind of have the right, like, you don't, I don't know. What I found interesting was like not fanboying out. Oh, shit. Oh, Did it shit. freeze? Pause. Yep. All right. Well, I fixed the camera. It's my cool. birthday. It's my birthday tomorrow. I took a shot. We started talking about half cabs. We're up. <laughs> We're up, dude. We're back, baby. <laughs> um, um, half caps. What's your biggest one? I like, uh, I mean, the one that's like the stands out, I guess, would be the one I did at Swamp Fest. I like they had that coffin thing, and I one eighty up onto the coffin. Oh yeah, holy shit! And half cap, yeah, I didn't even consider that. I'm thinking about stair sets and shit. Yeah, that's, yeah, I've done that's, some, a, that's a big boy. Yeah, I've done that. There's one in Tucson. It's like a long three block. It's yeah, kind of well known. Has that rail yep. down it. The that was lengthy the big, half cab is like crazier yeah, than the tall long. half cab. Yeah. I had to go as fast as I could and just 180 and then just, <laughs> and, then just ah. <laughs> and I think I even broke my pedal when I landed on that one. Yep. I think my pedal broke and my and foot just like off. didn't yeah. it just kind of bounced off and I was like, fuck it, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, for so, real. None. Taking it. Taking it, bitch. Yeah. Contest rules. It didn't touch the ground. I think the one at Swamp Fest, though, definitely the craziest half cab I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Tell <laughs> me about was, it. Oh man. I wish it was uh been there. Dude, Swamp Fest was so cool, first of all. That is yep. cool that Trey does that. Shout out. Shout out like, Trey. He was a big inspiration behind the organized crime jam I did last year, which I'm going to oh, try yeah. to do again. We could talk about that. Yes, please. Um, so Swamp Fest, we're, you know, he does like all the setups, you got the trails, you got everything. And then he was, we, I guess they were doing like a best trick, you could say, on the coffin. Everyone was going nuts. Like everyone's grinding the sides, doing this, doing that. Nose manuals across the top. Like people were jumping over the whole thing. And like Reed Stark, that's my boy. Shout out to Reed. He's like, if there's a hype level that needs to be brought, like that's the dude, you know, yeah, he's, 100%. he's Mr. Hype. Yeah. He so, really is, dude. He's yeah. not, it's just so, natural. Sorry, we're like on. up on the storage <laughs> container, which is the Roland. And I'm like, still in my head, don't even know if I want to send the 180. And I'm just like, he's like, fuck it. I'm going to feel, I think he feeble threed it. And he's like, go right behind me. And I was like, all right, fuck it. So he goes, lands it perfect. So I'm like coming down the Roland and see him landing it perfect. And I'm like, Oh, well, shit. I guess I have to. I told him <laughs> I was going to. Fucking, and in the clip, you could even tell, like, when I 180'd on, I almost landed on the coping. Like, I was, like, inches from the side. Damn. And I just remember kind of, like, looking over and just, like, fuck it, half cab. And I went <laughs> perfectly into the dirt. And I was Hell like, yeah. all right, well, that one worked. <laughs> and then they burned it all down, and that was fucking, that and was cool. Swamp Fest. Tell me about yeah. organized crime. That's dope. Um. So last year was the first one, I hope, of many. Uh. It was just came from like, I like to throw jams just to get the Vegas scene hyped and try to get people out here yep. and uh, seeing what Trey does and like how big that is and how much people appreciate it. I was like, all right, well, he's doing it like, you know, with pallets and stuff to the extreme, but it doesn't need to be that crazy. And then I've right. always liked the idea of like a best trick jam. So I got the idea to like get fiend if they were down premium and uh, just like kind of have them help with the materials and I did as cheap as possible. Like I just created these drawings of like, did the math of like, okay, I'll need this many pallets to build this setup. We could do this like, you know, and then, so I just reached out to both of them with these ideas, bounced ideas from, you know, Tony and uh, Garrett and Joey Cobbs over at premium. They were super down from day one. So then that just gave me more motivation to be like, all right. And I'd never really designed shit like that. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna go back literally like measuring pallets to see like if I put them this way, it's two by three by four tall and like had everything mapped out to where like, I need this much plywood, this much, these, you know, these pallets like gave them the designs. They were cool with it. The homies came, helped me build it all in my garage. And we just built all the ramps at my house Hell and man. brought them down to the parking lot and like built everything. And uh, they gave me money to give away for best trick and just promoted it. And then like, next thing I know, our BMX came out, Fudger, like all the pros from San Diego, like came like Dennis, Garrett, Chad, like I literally had X games lineup at yeah, my little real. jam in the so parking rad. lot, dude. <laughs> and like, I didn't realize, you know, and like a lot of them were like, bro, it's because you're the homie. Like you're a boy. Of course, you're going to come to your jam, you know? And it was like cost. a cool humbling yeah. experience to know, like, damn, if I put something on, like these people will come and like, yep. and the younger dudes that were there, like the locals, like everyone just had like one of the best days ever. They said, so it was like, 
it would turn from something that I was like, all right, I just want to help the locals out, maybe give some money away. And then it turned into like literally like all the best pros being there. And so red. It was cool. It was like, so it, I had so much yeah. fun. I didn't even ride really. It looked so I, like, fun. I had so much fun watching the recap video and I was like, this is so sick. And you, then, like, while you're telling the story, I was like, I don't know what he's, I, I, I've never, how do I not know about this organized crime jam? And then I remember like it clicked as soon as, I forget what you said was, they clicked. I was like, was cool. oh yeah, like, yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily Ben Snowden showed up with like a DJ setup. So I had a mic. Like yes, I've never announced yeah. anything, but I had so much fun, dude. It was From what so I remember in the video, you killed it announcing. It was and so fun, just brought, like just hyping people up. And this is something I was going to say to you earlier. Is like I just love how stoked you are on other people and other shit and positive stuff. Like that's so cool of you. Like the fact that you're this stoked about everybody else is why everybody else is so stoked on you. You know, like it's it's a beautiful attitude that you have. I think. And just and talking I to you for an hour, I'm like, oh yeah, this guy's the funniest. Just, you know, I think it's something I learned through BMX. You know, like what other i mean like with action sports yes but like outside of what we do when other does like a grown man like comfortably tell his homie he's the shit like yeah you know like i do it all the time like yeah. fuck yeah dude you're the dude you kill it like i'm so happy to tell my homies yes. like how much how proud of them i am and like how i think they're cool as fuck i'm just you know? picturing I'm, you bringing the bmx like banger stoke to your workplace and just like oh i do <laughs> sometimes people just, are like bro yeah. you're intense <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, like bro you're intense i'm like nah these fools are about to go out and have fun like let's go yeah. <laughs> so good dude that's yeah. i think it's i mean it's unique to video part riding and skating is the the celebration in the street this is so fucking sick dude yeah and that's what i was saying i found mm -hmm. a way at work to i see it as facilitating fun like the same way i would for the yeah. homies you know and i, I think that. that's like i would wouldn't mind like i know it's hard work but like being a team manager or like having one of those positions in bmx yep. where i could see that you know like because i You'd to me perfect, it's not a struggle dude. to yeah. get up and hype the people like get everyone hyped and i have a plan like when we're on road trips with fiend trips it's like garrett has all these spots and i'm like right there with him like bro we got this like i've seen this in videos like i'm just sitting there like yes and then you know and so it's cool to have bounce ideas back from him he knows i'm hyped like I'll Are you the oldest work. one in the van? Is Tony, Tony probably. Tony's older. Yeah. yeah. I think he's like 38, maybe. I was now, just picturing the, picturing the dynamic I am. between like you and like the young bucks, you know, like yeah. Lou and it's Lou and So, Johnny. like when we were in Salt Lake, it was me, Garrett, we were like the uncles, and it was Louis, Antonio, and Johnny. Yeah. So, it was like the three nephews, bucks. and then me <laughs> and Garrett were like the uncles. And like, <laughs> that's just how it feels. And it's just like, yeah. But it's the coolest group of motherfuckers to be with. Like those, 100%. I would yeah. choose them as my nephews seven days out of the week. That's you know amazing. what I mean? Like, yeah. So, <laughs> and the like so the knowledge good. that they bring, it's like they're grown men now. And like, it's super cool. You know, it's weird everyone, when the young kids are grown men. It's like, oh shit, yeah. damn, I'm double old. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like this, like I've talked about it with Garrett too. Like for me, seeing them, him and Dennis were a year younger than me and seeing them come up. They were so young. Like there was that fuel TV thing about them graduating high school yes, and like being I a new Yeah. And like to me, I was riding at TJ Lavin's house at that time. Like, fuck, dude, these guys, like, and I knew Dennis. So that was like my best friend when I was a kid, you know? Yeah. And we had grown apart, just but like still homies. Like his his grandpa's always lived in Vegas. So he'd always come out. We'd go ride like YMCA skate park and stuff together. Right. And like just seeing where he took it at such a young age. And now, like, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think there was like almost a gap of like, like we have uh, like the young Suzuki, I think his name is like, yeah, he's super dude. young. Oh my God. But like in between him and like the 25 year olds, like, I feel like there was kind of like a, like who's the young 18 year old right now that's up and coming, you know, like that's there was Chad, question. there was, there was all these dudes, you know, and then yeah. it kind of like turned into a grown man's common crew. Yeah. And like, like <laughs> the I was common saying, crew has like, grown up. So it's, a, yeah, it's a, <laughs> they're even 25, 26 yeah, now, right? you know, like. And Damn, so who who's and like Felix, like that. I know they me, exist. Yeah, Felix is young. Like, like Lewis is 22, I think. Johnny, but even them, like they're older now. Like they're getting yeah. in their 20s and like they're established pros. Like they're adults. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm like, I want to know because I want to watch them and appreciate the riding. Right, like, yeah. They're I'm out like, there. Yeah, I know they are. And, and I'm maybe, gonna find them. I'm gonna find them. That's what I joke all the time. I, I tell people I'm like, you don't get old until you uh, like stop evolving. Like the second you say that your time was better than what's going on now, that's when you start getting old. Like Dude, a good preach. example is like Corey Martinez. 
Like yes. he always has evolved his riding, his bike. Yep. So it doesn't seem like he's an old dude on the bike. Like you yeah. watch him and his riding is modern. His bike is modern. Dude, he fucking influenced the modern riding and then yeah. became the modern. Yeah. Runner. And then That's became it. And, yeah. Yeah. And so like, he's never been one of those dudes who got salty and was like, Oh, my days were better. You yeah. know, like now he's always just appreciate the time he's in. Back in my and, day, we used to just double peg a rail. Yeah. I hate when people, like, you know, people were sending it back in the day way harder. I'm like, dude, Nathan oh, dude. nollying with a hard 180 out. Oh, yeah. like nolly overgrind to hard 180, the same rail that like Dave Young did a gap to rail on. Yeah. Like stop that, trying to say. <laughs> you were just 13 you know I mean? and it was impressionable. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. You know, like I, I love, saw some you know. clip of like an old X Games run and uh, it was Scotty and all respect to Scotty, but like young, I mean, 16, 17 year old Scotty riding X Games and the shit he was doing was like top of the game back then mm-hmm. but like you take a young park rider now and it just shits Blows all over like it's yeah, so it's nuts dude like crazy park riding is like on a whole nother level it's you can't even it's imagine. like at a peak right now i think it's doing like that's crazy yeah, it's, you know? it's, it's legit crazy and they can do it like over and over and over again yeah. it's all so dialed like they're practicing for these contests and it's just like i was trying to explain to a, a layman i'll call him just a, a homie who doesn't ride like the mm-hmm. difference between park riders and video park riders and it's like night and day like those yeah. dudes those dudes are way fucking up here which is honestly. cool like, <laughs> video you look at it day, it's but. like street riding and what that aspect of riding is more like a lifestyle it's like yes we 100%. You, we live this we just travel we do this whereas not in a bad way but park riding is more of a sport when you yep. go you put your pads on your uniform just like another sport when you yep. go play football you don't wear your street clothes to play football you put on a uniform when you go ride parks you put on your pads your helmet you gear up when you're huh. riding street, you just dress like that all the time. You just grab your bike and go ride yep. and pedal. It's just a, it's a different, the mindset's different. You know, you're, you're not, it's like a, it is a sport. It's a physical activity and it does take, you have to be healthy and all the same things that a sport takes, but at the same time, it's a lot more involved. Yeah. You know, the, what your the apparatus you're using or whatever you want to say, like the spots you're riding aren't even made for what you're doing. You're right. just finding some shit, some construction worker made, and you're yep. like, bro, that I could link that to that, and and you have to use your eyes, and like you have to really think about things. It's a whole different ball game, yeah. Yeah, and it's, take, like I said, you take not, a really dedicated only park rider out, and they're like, I don't know what to do. And I'm not <laughs> taking any credit from what those guys do because yeah. what those guys do is completely crazy on a different level. Like yep. they are fully dedicated to what they do, and it's I respect it. I respect talent. So like when you're asking what my yeah. hobbies are, like outside, like. I watch MMA, I watch sports, like I watch anything that I can see somebody like if I see a professional and they're somehow excelling far beyond the other professionals, like that's a special person, you know, Truly. like and we should appreciate yeah. that talent, like Garrett in 100%. a way, yep. you know, he Just... somehow has found a way like all these dudes are also professionals and same capabilities, whatever. But he just keeps that one level, you yep. know, and it's like steadily since fucking yeah. 2000. Yo, what other sport besides like, like LeBron dude. has that? Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. We got and Garrett, even LeBron dude. has his downs, dude. Rough. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one in the championships every yeah. year. For you real. Know? Dude. It's like fuck. unbelievable. Man. And what so speaking of UFC real quick, do you know what's going on with the fights tonight? Will you tell me about them? Um tonight is uh I know Charles Oliveira is fighting. He's uh I like him. He's one fifty five um it's pretty much like for me that's the most exciting weight class to watch that's like uh it's like uh got justin gaishi and like khabib was in that one conor mcgregor like okay a lot of dudes are at 155 so that one's really fun to watch like the top five are like killers and they're all going after each other so that one's fun to watch because it's like each fight is like gonna be crazy they're going for the win so (laughs) that's cool to watch and like I said, I, just re- I appreciate talent. So like anywhere I can see like something cool, like I'll take the time to watch it. And like, you know, I used to be more of a hater when I was younger, but like, who's got time? We all it? were, dude. Young yeah. and salty and just like, ah, that's lame. Fuck yeah. Them. Yeah. You know, as I've gotten older, I'm like, I'm like, I, I wouldn't even put it past me. Like in my younger twenties to like call like the hot air balloon thing that Chris Kyle did like horny back, you know? <laughs> yeah, but now I'm like, dude, that's so tight. It's so like, yeah. <laughs> yes. And like me as a young 20 little shithead, I probably been like, what's he doing up there? Like why are they wasting so much money? <laughs> <laughs> it's still funny, dude. Did <laughs> <laughs> you just put that skate park on the ground? <laughs> you know, but now that's I'm like, dude, that's so there. cool that they yeah. took like, 
a whole marketing team and they sat down and like came up with an idea and all like made it shit. happen, you know, yep. and it's cool. Like I respect all of the aspects behind it now. To hear the story of like, they built it out of something and then they were like, oh no, it's too heavy. And then they built the entire thing out of carbon fiber. I was yeah. like, what? That's cool. It's cool. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. And like, I bet you the guys who got to do that job, like were probably hyped. The guys who got to make the, yeah. you know, like I'm sure a normal job they do is boring and like, it's a team like, of 50 we're gonna, people to make that shit happen. Yeah, we're gonna make this ramp and it's gonna fucking fly on a hot air balloon. And they're like, cool, like <laughs> this is gonna be a fun job. Like that's cool, you know. And it created cool. these other, yep. <laughs> <laughs> like now he's sitting at home with his family, like watching YouTube. Like, dude, check this out. I made that. You yeah, know? for real. Yeah. So and it, that shit permeated like the culture. Like it wasn't just a BMX video. It was a Red Bull. Like that shit showed yeah. up on my dad's Facebook feed. Yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. It's, and that's, I think that's, there's something powerful about that for the sport of BMX too. Like, oh shit, that's pretty cool. And then some kids saw it that, that Chris mm -hmm. Kyle video will be some kids like seven year olds, like origin story. The yeah. next, the next Matt Clausen is going to be. And the way yeah. I see it is if one kid gets hyped and gets a bike, it was successful. Yeah. hundred percent. Like anything that I think of, like if a video or like somebody, even like the whole YouTube thing, I used to hate on the vlogs. Like, why are you guys wasting your time doing that? Like, it's so crazy. Like. But now I see it as of like, it brings people into the sport and it opens things up. It's good. Look at you know, you, like dude. you're, you're a grown ass. You're, you're turning 34 yeah, this year. You're I know. And it's, <laughs> yeah. I'm like trying to see things for like, like life is really easy to be shitty. Like sure it is. is so easy to just get caught in the like mundane nine to five. Like my home life sucks. I don't take care of myself. And then like, next thing you know, you're just like drinking or you go down a hill and like, I've seen it with friends. I've seen it with people, you know, a lot of people around me. And it's like that line of like, I feel like I grew up like one fucking paycheck away from being like poor, you know, like broke. So it was yeah. always like, and I never had a backup. Like, so it was always like, just handle shit, like, and get it done. And like, yeah, I don't know. Dude, so that's I, awesome. Like the fact that you grew up or like, you know, coming up without a backup, it says a mm -hmm. lot about you. Like you fucking made it and you got a stable, like, yeah, home, and I didn't do anything special, like, but passions. I feel like where if you would have told me I'd have this when I was a kid, I would have never thought that was possible. Like yeah. you're gonna have your own house and like you're gonna be doing good and like all these things. I'm like, nah, like <laughs> nah, nah, not me. I'm just you a know? little shit on a seven yeah. year old, seven year old, yeah, riding around a parking well, you, lot, dude. That's awesome. And this may sound like kind of crazy, but you know, one of the things I try to tell the younger homies, um, I think it was yeah, 2019, I was turning 30. And I just had this spark at the beginning of the year. I was like, everything was going good. Like I was, you know, Fiend was going good. I was filming with them a bunch, like kind of just doing me. And I was like, I'm be 30 this year. And I'm just going to put my all into BMX this year. And like, not really anything different what I was doing, but I was just going to show up as much as I could. Like whatever events are happening all year, I'm going. And I just Hell like yeah. paid for my own flights if I had to talk to Fiend, like if they would help me. And I just made a plan of all year just showing up. You know what I mean? And that was my, and me and Reed all 2019, that was our show up, baby. Show up. Like that was, <laughs> yes. I was just saying that, you know, and like, and that was half the battle for me was just like, just go out there. And, yes. you know, like they say, like right place at the right time or whatever. And I've found like, and it's super cliche or like whatever you want to say, but it's like the more places you put yourself, the better your percentage or your chances of it being the right time. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. if you're always in the same place, the percentage, the chance that that's going to be the right place at the right time is going to be very low. But if you're yeah. always putting yourself in different places, the chance of it being the right time is going to be better. Yes, you know, sir. you're giving yourself better chances. Yes. So like, just put yourself out there and show up like just the more, you know, and yeah. I just did Where'd that. Where'd you learn that, I, dude? Did you learn that in college? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> fucking the streets, dude. <laughs> that came to you during your concussion. You're like, you know what? Right. Just fucking show up, dude. I yeah. love that. that. That's you yeah, and Reed show up. That. Show up, battle. dude. Show yeah. up. For and that was like me and Reed. Just show up. <laughs> and uh, so then that led into like, I had a good ass year. Like I did all these things. And then the end of 2019 was the dawn of the streets. And I fucking won. Like, Oh, I wish probably I when I look back right now, at the fucking <laughs> the best day of riding I've ever had was probably that day. Hell yeah. Like the I think I did like six tricks all day, something like that. But all of them that I did, like would I would have been happy for that to be like the last trick on my part. Like yes. and I did all of those in one day. Bangers. Somehow I was able. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> I look back at that day and I'm like, where was I? Like I was fucking 
on a different Sasha. planet that yeah. day. Yeah, like I was just in the zone. Like in the right place, think, right time. Yeah, right place, right time. Exactly. Yeah. And I could have sat my ass at home and watched everyone have a good ass time in New York, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get my ass out there. And then that ended up happening. One five G's like never won a BMX contest or anything like that ever, you know. And that was my shit. Like it was a street thing, and like it was yeah. cool. So that was a really cool like. Were you, let me ask you something. Were you like trying to win it? You think when you were there? Cause it's like a, it's a jam I mean, and it's known that there's a, a prize. It's yeah. Like, like I'm gonna go in. I mean, I like sending it. Like I like doing scary shit. My motivation behind the whole day was like, it was my first time in New York. I grew up watching animal videos and shit and like dreaming of riding New York. Like that was, and the first spot we get to is like that gap to rail in Brooklyn. It's like, the gap to black rail that's super yeah, famous famous as fuck yeah and i was everybody like everybody from all over the world oh, man i'm there. like yeah. I grew up <laughs> oh, watching man. this spot and then i knew jeff martin did the gap to tires already he but, get man it yeah but i was like i'm gonna gap to it. tires it like it's a jam like i ain't i didn't have anything else for the spot dude like brock's there doing gap over pegs hard three and you got Devin. Yeah. like it was a crazy ass day like the first spot that day it just started going off and like so then I did the gap to tires and it worked really well. And I was like, holy fuck, I could maybe manual it. And it was kind of to the side. Yeah. It was kind of a weird side hop and stuff, which I don't, that's not really my approach at a manual. But I was like, if I just go fast enough, fucking. Maybe boom. everything just, will be all right. <laughs> yeah, I just boom, went off the end and then something clicked. Like right then I was like, all right, each spot we go to, I'm going to yeah. fucking, I'm going to try to give it something. Fuck and yeah. then like we went to the seven block spot and everyone was going off. And I'd fucking threed over that rail. And the first time I tried it, dude, my nose. It yeah, like my fucking close, dude. I hit first try. My like I didn't know I was going to. Nose bonked. Got like super scared, threw the bike, and just like tumbled at the bottom. Yeah. Ran back up. A few more people went. And then I kind of told myself, like, dude, when you three that, your nose is probably you're you're probably gonna nose bonk again. So be ready this time. And so I just threed and I felt my front tire bonk it and I just like <laughs> picked my bars up to my chest and i seen the rail go under me and i was like oh i'm back in a normal three over a rail now like once i seen the rail go under me and i felt like tucked i just set the landing gear down and like rode holy out holy like was... shit dude <laughs> and then i'm like holy shit my fucking you're just like hit. plan on nose bonking <laughs> it was a half and half i was gonna accept yeah. it if it happened but yeah. i was also gonna be very happy if it didn't it's amazing dude <laughs> it's all coming <laughs> back to me every single clip i can see in my head now like, and then oh, yeah gosh. i got like uh we went to like the black hubba spot which is super famous yeah obviously backlash. and then i got the backlash down that it's like unreal yep. dude, oh the whole day like yeah. those are all clips Keep I dream, coming. I let's dream. go tell me yeah. about the backlash tell i would me this dream story. of filming these clips and like luckily i fucking oh and i manual there was like a 16 stair rail we went to and i did the biggest rail manual i've ever done first try i just like hobie oh. tires it right in front of me and everyone's screaming and cheering and i'm like all right, here we go. Same. I guess that's my. <laughs> I have this switch. I just flip this switch, and I'm like, I guess we're going now. <laughs> you're like not even in your body. You just push the button, and you're like, all right, and here yeah. we go. You know. <clears throat> and I, I tell myself, and this is when I got hurt, like when I just crashed, and this recent one where I had to get knee surgeries. Um, the last like few years of filming and riding, like I've been pretty confident with like, all right, this is the spot for this trick. Like, because I know the shit I'm doing, playing with fire. Like, I get it. Like, I know. Yeah. And what do they, you play with fire, Angelos. you burn, right. you know? So yeah. it's like, be smart. Make sure you're confident. The approach is right. Because if this ain't the right one, I've learned from Garrett, like, don't force it. You'll find the spot. Like, the spot will come to you. You know yeah. what I mean? Just keep that trick dialed. And when you're ready for it, you'll find the right spot. And on this and, day, all the spots came to you. <laughs> uh, yes. And then, you know, and like, I have, I've been really good about choosing my battles and like, risk reward. You know, like, yeah. this is the one this spot's perfect for this. I'm going for it. But then that day that I fucking fucked my shit up, I was like maybe 80%, you know, but I'm like already have so much stacked. And I was like, I've been thinking about this trick for a long time. It's like a famous Man, spot in San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll I just it, like, but yeah. tried to force it and fucking it wasn't. And with what I do, like that type of writing, it's like, you can't really try to force shit. You have right. to let it be, you know? Yeah. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. Man. Try to force it. I'm so hyped on the Donna Street story. And then you just brought it back to you fucking your knee up. What happened? I know. <laughs> Donna Street, though, was like one of the best times. Was that, that the last day, trick, like, the manual? The uh, manual that, that Hobie tires? Yeah, but honestly, I think the backlash down the Black Hubba was probably, to me, just like use of spot. Like, yeah. you know, Ain't famous doing spot. That shit. Yeah. 
Yeah. You've I tried to deturn it the next year. Yeah, I tried to deturn it the next year. Yeah, at, at the skate park. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Maybe can, do you, <clears throat> I guess we can't know, but maybe that's in the footage with Fiend? No, I'm honestly, I've been trying to find a spot for it, but it's so scary and such a weird one that it's like, it has a weird I really one. don't know the right spot yet. Like, I think it would have to be something like, did where you do you it coming off, out of a bank? Yeah, I was out of a bank and like I alley ooped into it. Right. So I would have to find something like a little tiny out rail where it's low to get onto, not very long. I also don't want to drop that's going to kill me. Drop. If yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Immediately, like what I'm thinking about is those trailers that go up. Yeah, you know I mean? that's yeah. probably yeah. You're right. Something like that, right up the ramp, alley yeah. oops. Yep. And yeah, maybe one. We day. can put some foam down, and it's yeah. nice and safe, and you can land in foam. Maybe one fine. day. <laughs> that's my goal, though. Like, I don't. I want to be back to where I was because I was feeling super good on my bike, you know. Yeah. And like, I, that's my goal with this whole thing is, I just want to be back to where I was, and if not, then better. So. So how do you do that? What's your plan? What's your vision? Um, like physical therapy. I'm at the point now. I'm almost 12 weeks out from my ACL surgery and I'm like doing pretty good compared to what, like they say with normal people, which obviously any BMX is probably going to push it harder than the average person there. Yeah. Um, but like I'm at the point now where I'm doing leg presses, like one legged squats, stationary bike, um, with the bad, with the bad leg. Yeah. Yep. Nice, and, dude. uh, on the elliptical, no running on the treadmill yet, but I'm like, you know, pretty much weight stuff now, balance stuff. Like I'm building the muscle back now. And Sick. so, yeah. Yeah. And I'm at a good point. Like I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's been a long fucking six months, but, um, you know, like I, I was super lucky for almost 20 years to never have any knee problems. And so like, I kind of just fucking accepted it. Like it was, you know, I don't want to say it's bound to happen cause it's not, but it's like one of those things where I can't get too bummed. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. But so. dude, I can't even imagine like in the moment you're like, Fuck. oh yeah, you can see my face in the clip. Like I'm not even, I, I hurt. I'm in shock, you're but like sad. you can see like my face just knows like the next six months of my life. Like, <laughs> yeah, gonna be dude. Hell. Oh, like I just like, yeah. just the depression, like you can just see like, <laughs> just so <laughs> bummed. Yeah, yeah. Bummed. Just like, right. uh, dude. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry that happened to you, man. But Hey, we're fucking, you're a trooper. it's crazy how humans are, you know, like, from one day to the next, like, yeah, I'm back walking, working, doing normal shit. Like, For real. I'm like a normal person at this point now. Yes. You know, but I don't <laughs> want to be normal. Congrats. I want to be yeah. back to riding. Yeah. Back to being a fucking athlete and yeah. doing my park tricks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to be first, for sure. Um, I'm going to be ripping the, park, the concrete right? bowls. Yeah. yeah. Dirt jumps, getting yep. the flow back. Dirt jumps, like, elude me because they look so natural and easy. But it, it's not, but it doesn't feel like, it's not like you're forcing it with a bunny hop. My just, whole thing with trails was always, if I follow somebody who knows what they're doing here and I know how to ride a bike, I go the same speed as them, I'm going to be all right. It'll work you out. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the formula adds up like A plus B, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. he knows what he's doing. He does this all the time. Yeah. I know how to ride a bike. So if, as long as I do what he's doing, it should all just equate. It should all work out, yeah. Yeah. Just pull back, and you have that muscle memory from the yeah, racing, exactly. racing days. And then you hit a few times, maybe over clear a couple, whatever, and then you're like, you start learning you which can, ones you need you to pull back on, which ones you push through. And yeah. I never I never had that. I grew up riding curbs and the flat ground in front of my parents' house. <clears throat> so me and Transition do not get along, but like I've been working on hitting the Tempe Park hip and like getting above coping, like, I was going to say, you're going over coping? Yeah, dude, I'm going over coping. Yeah. Even at Glendale, I was like, hey, will you tell me if I'm over coping or not? And just tried to do a straight air out, like a of a six or seven foot quarter. And he was like, yeah, bro, you were like that high. And I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. Like BMX can be so different just from right, your upbringing. Yeah. You know? it's, it's amazing. Like, I, yeah. what it is, is I remember hitting little baby dirt jumps when I was a kid, like right before basketball practice. And I fucked my arm up and my knee and I'm bleeding all over the place. And my dad got so mad at me and I was just like, okay, I'm never doing dirt jumps again. <laughs> you know, Cause it was safer to, for me to ride. We had these cuts. jumps that were by my middle school in San Diego and we would hide shovels and we would leave for school early, go ride the dirt jumps and nice. then on the way home, go ride them again. Hell so yeah. like I would show up to school, fucking bloody, dirty, like, just what happened you, and kid? Crash. yeah after a while the teachers were just used to it like oh this nice. kid's just a grimy little kid like yeah he's a was, little rocket power kid dude yeah i had my little race bike dude i was riding this like super expensive race bike to school and like i lived in kind of a shitty area of el cajon yeah. like 
Yeah, I didn't know any better, dude. I was just like, whatever. How many bikes have you had stolen in your life? Zero. No I've shit. Never, yes. I thought it was just like part of the process. Like no, had like four you know or five. What? I've had too. my. I swear to this one. This was the race bike I was just talking about too. I was like twelve. It was so nice. Like a couple thousand dollars for this bike. We were in a Hollywood video, if you remember those. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so we're getting some probably games or some shit for PlayStation. Who knows? Yeah. But my friend had his bike on top of mine, and his was like a dyno, like a normal, just like a BMX bike. You know. I remember the dynos. And mine was actually on top of his. And we were so dumb. We went into Hollywood video and left him outside. You know, they're, they're stacked. Nobody up. can take them, obviously. <laughs> and then. <laughs> We come out and my bike is thrown to the side and they took his bike. <laughs> wow. Because it was probably a big dude and he's seen the little skinny ass tires and like the tiny little bike Yo, and he's fuck like this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It funny. weighed like nothing. He just <laughs> tossed that bitch to the side, <laughs> grabbed my friend's bike and took off. And like little did the dude know that was like two hundred dollars for that bike, maybe and mine was like a couple grand. You right. know, so yeah. it was like he's like, nah, yeah, I'm looking for transportation, homie. <laughs> I've had like friends like that kind of situation, you know. Yep. I've chased people down and got friends bikes back for them. Hell yeah. Um, shit so like you that. did that in Arizona or no? Somebody did that in Arizona. No, I do remember that story though. Something. Somebody right? chased somebody down, like yeah. tackled the dude, got the bike back. Yeah. What pops yeah. into your head when you say that though? For your, for your story of chasing somebody down. Um, at Desert Breeze Skate Park, when I moved to Vegas, that was known as like kind of like the hood park. Fights were always happening. Kids just hung out and sold drugs. Like, Which one is Desert Breeze, by the way? Uh, super tight. Sammy Baca skates a lot. Has like um like a really tight snake run. It's like a really shitty concrete park. Has a little street section too. The Is bowls it? are really tight. It has like these death rail things in the middle that are kind of famous. Josh Harrington and Rob Wise both did some really cool things on them. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like got these two rails and like Harrington went up and did like ice over ice over bar. Yes. Like and then uh, <laughs> Rob Wise. I was there for both of them randomly as as a kid too. I got to see both of them get filmed. Fucking Rob Wise did all the way over ice and then into Rob the hole. Rob Wise is a and, goddamn legend, yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah, getting to see him ride was, was pretty crazy. Yeah. Speaking, you know, I'm like, on. man, BMX, like, when you said legend, I just was thinking about watching Harrington and those. That trip when Harrington did that, he was filming with Miles, and they stayed at my house during Interbike and then filmed – and it was like that part, uh, Miles and Harrington, like put out a part, like right towards the end of Harrington's riding. Yeah. And, um, that week or whatever was crazy because Ricky Bates and Gary stayed with me too. Fuck. And so they, it was like, that like year too. Getting, getting choked up, like thinking yeah. about it, but like they were at my house with Miles and like, we all just stayed and filmed and like, we got to go out with Harrington and watch him film like this dude murdered it, like filmed four crazy clips in one day with miles and like me and Ricky and Gary D Martin, the other one that passed away with him. He like, we were all just sitting in amazement watching, you know, and like getting that experience. And I barely knew those guys. And then like, they ended up staying at my house for a few days and like, we became super close. And then that's when they were going to Phoenix. They actually left my house to drive to Phoenix. Dude. Yeah. And so, and like, I look back on a lot of these things and I think it shaped, like at the time I was so young and just like, whatever, I didn't really let it affect me, yeah. you know? But then as I got older, I'm like, damn, yeah, man, like those were two cool ass people that I said bye to, like, didn't even know, you know, like, right, yeah. I just like, peace out guys, have a fun trip in Phoenix. And then, yeah. you know, everything like, is going to be all right. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. And then I yeah. wake up in the middle of the night out of nowhere, getting texts like, yo, where are they at? Like, they're supposed to be at your house. Like now we're hearing all this shit. And I'm like, you know, oh, like, fuck. Yeah. And so that was, I was young, you know, and like, I just kind of took it. And like, soon after that, like now I'm like, there's just a lot of shit that happened. And I just kind of like, when I look back on those times, I just kind of like fucking panicked and moved out of Vegas and just like, just change shit, you know? And when I look back, I'm like, why did I move? I don't even remember why. Like, and then I look back on a lot of things and I'm like, I think mentally I just needed to change. Like, I yeah. And like, luckily, and this is what I brought it up. Like I was, I appreciate all these moments in BMX. Like I was able to meet them. We got to go watch one of our legends. Like that last week, like few days we had a filming and going out was like one of the best times ever, yeah. you know? And like for what we do and like me getting to see them do their thing, getting to see Harrington do his thing with miles, like being a part of that, like I was talking about earlier, no one outside of BMX gives a shit. Right. But for yeah. me, that meant like everything. everything. Right. And those yeah. will be memories I'll have for my whole life, you know? Yeah. And luckily I was able to meet those two guys and they, you know, in the short amount of time I spent with them, they left a big impression on me. And 
you know, and I, I know you talked to Colt and like, he's a big part of band too. And like, that was a crazy thing, you know, so so heavy, guys dude. influenced a lot of us. Yeah. And you know, that's <clears throat> band for life, dude. Fucking yeah. Hey, man. Honestly, I, can't, I didn't know that you were with them like right before, like that's, yeah, crazy. it's, and we weren't close like that, but we were BMX your brothers instantly, you know? Yeah. For real. And what was it like hanging out with them? What was Ricky like? Dude, yeah. he was awesome. Like, like he was just fucking passionate. Like he loved BMX. You could tell. Hell yeah. And just 100, like go, go, go. Like, yeah. It was cool to see. And like, you could tell he was that like motivating factor of their crew. 100%, you know, like he yeah. was that dude. That's and I like, kind of take stuff from all these people. And like, I try to be that guy, you know, like I yeah. try to be the guy that gets everyone together. Like we can the, all have a little Ricky in us, you know? Yeah, no, for sure, man. And like, yeah. And like I said, fucking show up as much as you can meet as many people as you can like these experiences you'll have from BMX mean just as much as any trick you'll learn or like, you know what I mean? So yeah. pedaling through a city or just like one time this, I got stuck at an airport in Minnesota. I was with my mom. We were going to see family and get stuck in Minnesota overnight. I like hit Twitter up or something like stuck in Minneapolis. Who's trying to kick it? Reed Stark comes and picks me up in like 20 minutes. My mom's like, you have a friend here? And you know, I'm like, yeah, my buddy's coming to pick me up. And like, he comes and picks me up. And like, we had a cool night and like, just hung out, chilled, you know, like brought me to his brother's house and Kyle. Yep. And it was just like one of those things of like, without BMX, that would have never happened. Right. Yeah. It took 20 minutes. I literally threw a tweet out there into the universe. (laughs) And within 20 minutes, I'm getting picked up by my boy. You Make know, that noise again. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, did that move. It's but, really yeah. magical. Like I, I tell that to people sometimes. I'm like, I think any state or like country, you could probably I could probably hit somebody up and like have a couch to stay on. Like that's yeah. you know, no questions asked. BMX family. It's fucking rad. Yeah. That's one of the things that I try to explain to people at work and like talk to them about, like kind of with a culture of what I do, and they're like, huh, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Like and like you're not staying at a hotel when you go there i'm like nah i'm staying at my boy's house like you know like (laughs) yeah like oh what do you guys do you know like i'll pedal around the city go to schools (laughs) like (laughs) we trespass and damage (laughs) other people's properties (laughs) and document it it's really cool Hop fences yeah it's fucking fun (laughs) i never want to get over it like you want to come hang out with us it's thrilling yeah (laughs) (laughs) like I, i have the spark for sure like i it I isn't know. going away anytime soon. That's for sure. That's what's up. I, I'm glad yeah. that this knee injury isn't taking you out, like you're mentally or spiritually or anything. Trying Seems my best. Like you're all right. Sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you've been through something with these. Yeah, yeah for sure. We all do, and yeah, I look at things times. like, "Fuck, dude!" It could, and it's you know whatever, but it could always be worse. You know, like 100. Yeah. There's a lot of people going through shit way worse than what I'm going through right now, and like every other aspect of my life is pretty good. So if I could just focus on getting better then I have that, you know, and right. there's a lot of people that don't have that. So, Thanks. you know, I can just look at that. So, <laughs> you know, I'll get down on myself, but that ain't going to help much. Um, you know, yeah. but it's, I get it. Not for everyone. It's not like that. It is, it's like a chemical thing and mental imbalance sometimes or a chemical right, yeah. imbalance. I mean, so I get that, you know, whereas yeah. luckily I, most of the time can either do something scary to humble myself and calm myself down or like, put my focus into something beneficial and then I don't feel so crazy after, yeah. you know, cause that's, we all have those spikes of, yeah, for you know, real. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's you sitting watching the film. Yes. <laughs> and I think, uh, most people fucking take the easy route, you know, of alcohol or drugs. Cause it's like, a yes. it's Quick an easy way to source. Yeah, for sure. And it yep. doesn't take effort. Right. You don't have to fucking try a hundred times. You can just fucking, yeah. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I want to do that. No. <laughs> and like, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I think humans, all humans are just looking for something exciting in life, you know? And Big luckily facts. BMX is something that is, keeps you fit, healthy, mentally, physically, brings cool people into your circle, teaches you a lot about life. Yeah. All things that when we're young and we pick a bike up, we don't ever expect, you know, like for real. And if you're looking for something out of it, that's probably when you won't find anything. But if you're just doing it and you're just like, you know, like, this is what I like to do. I have fun with these cool people. I better myself through this. Then you'll probably learn a lot of shit and you'll probably get some stuff out of it. You know, bars, 
Yeah. Fucking Uncle Clausen <laughs> coming through with the hammers. That's what's yeah, man. man. I don't know. I don't, what time did we start? That that could be the end right there. Yeah. Fuck it. We we talked about a lot of cool shit. Yeah, yeah we did. Anything else you want to say? We didn't even do any um, of my corny podcast questions. Do you got some stuff? I usually, yes. Oh, one of the, the one I do want to ask you is like, who don't I know that I should know about? And then we follow them on Instagram. I was probably going to say Sammy Combs, but you probably know. I do know he, Sammy Combs. Yeah. That's like my, that's my, uh, that's my little rider right there. I met him when he was like 15 and kind of took him under my wing, even though he's like twice my size. Papa Bison, baby. Yeah. Papa Bison. Yeah. He's sick um, with it. Oh, he's looking slimmer now, dude. Oh, yeah. Yep. Hell Boy's yeah. taking care of himself. Good he's job, got a lot Sammy. of good shit going on. Yeah. Shout out, go follow Papa Bison, everybody. That's dope. Yep. That's my little, that, so that'll be who I'll, I'll, I'll use him because that's my boy right there. All right. Dope. Been working on a little part with him. He's uh, got some sponsors going and stuff now. So, it's yeah. Cool. Who's, he, who's he sponsored by? Uh, he's got volume. Um, yeah. I remember when that needs is sending him free stuff. Like, he's look he's got at all these going. sponsors. He's got all the sponsors. Yeah, see? Look that's at all little, those. <laughs> yeah, let's say that's my little Sammy? homie, but like I said, he's like That's my little me. big homie, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's my little homie, dude. <laughs> yeah. So all right. But and then, um shout out Fiend, shout out blah blah blah. Would you like to shout out your sponsors, Matt Clausen, before we finish this professional pod? I just want to tell them thank you for having my back through all this. Like I know there's a lot of companies or people that wouldn't keep supporting me and like both premium and fiend have been like nothing but supportive and like giving me like outlets of like, Hey, do you want to help with this? Or like be more involved with this while you can't ride, you know? And like, so it's, it's been cool. Like I definitely have with all the shit that goes with it, money, fucking downtime, pain, all that, like having a cool support team around me has helped a lot. That's what's up. I love it. I mean, I can, uh, I can throw this out there too. I haven't made it public yet, but speaking of how cool my sponsors are, um, Fiend and Premium sent me like a whole bike, pretty much an exact replica of the bike I ride. And I'm going to do a raffle on my Instagram here like soon. Yeah. yeah. So somebody can pretty much win a brand new Fiend complete, like it's Tymo frame, just like I ride all the premium parts I ride, all the signature stuff from Colin, Chad. And so they're cool. Like, you know, like two knee surgeries, even with insurance is a little rough, you know, so them being down to help without me having to try to do like a GoFundMe or something like I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to just ask for something. So they kind of helped me with ideas of like, hey, let's we could do this, you know, and you could give something back. And I was like, well, shit, that's cool. That's so, very cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so out also, there soon on my Instagram, whenever I can, I got the bike, I built it, I just got to. I got to do the it? logistics behind it and I'll get that all out there. So did you sign it? How are you going to accept the money? Go fund me. Hmm? Uh, I was just thinking Venmo cash. Up. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I got to figure all that out. Fuck so, you, but, man. I'm going to make you a go fund me. People need no, people. People will be down to help you out. It'll be a, uh, but yeah, I'd rather, I want to do this raffle. Cause I think it'd be cool yeah. to have somebody win the bike, 10 bucks, maybe something. I don't know. You just, now you have a whole complete bike. That's like the perfect bike. It's literally what I ride. It's like, I'm going to enter 25 times <laughs> it's go. like out the box the perfect bike <laughs> I can, putting I it can together i was bike. actually like kind of jealous i was like man i don't even really ask for all these parts at once you know like i <laughs> yeah, never asked right. for a whole bike like that yeah. so i was putting it together like damn this thing is nice like i don't even know if i want to raffle it off but <laughs> you yeah, just seriously start, shout you out to bmx as a whole shout out to you for doing this bobby keep the shit going like um dig for supporting yeah. uh they've always Huge. dig was a uh, first real magazine i was in so shout out fuck yeah they, that was cool they gave me like a low profile thing back in like 2010 i had a two-page spread damn so, back when we yeah. were 20 so, yeah shout out to dig <laughs> dude that's why shout out to dig shout out to uh, dig. yeah but seriously you know Wes mcgrath my boy over there um mm-hmm. frank you know they're all homies so uh yeah bmx as a whole dude like very appreciative i chose this as a path when i was seven years old (laughs) never (laughs) thought it would continue to be something i was so involved in you know 15 years later yeah so well you're nothing but a beacon of light every time we've crossed paths dude you're the fucking best you hype everybody up around you and yeah you're the shit you deserve everything that you've gotten and more you know appreciate that bobby thanks for coming uh let's kick it soon for sure yeah for real we'll figure out man right after i stop recording when we're hanging out yeah me too yeah yeah. it's not gonna end right now but for yep. them it is. Bye guys. And now you've reached the end of the video and uh, you're going to have a good day. Thanks.
for listening, you know, or watching. <laughs>